Hello. Oh, there I am. Okay, cool. Hi. Why do I have a fort of two? What the fuck? Because it sucks to suck. Yeah, I guess so. What the shit, man? Oh, oh we still have stone skin. Yay! Alright, so we left off uh, after you had just downed um, Barl Breakbones, the stone giant sorcerer. Or actually, he was a necromancer. Um, oh my god. As okay. the proverbial smoke clears, uh, you hear some cackling towards your southwest, and that's when Morrigan's first spotted uh, what looked to be a ten foot tall, um, very gaunt, um, horrific looking uh, female that has um, things that are actually uh, hooked into her chin, dragging down to the ground with like small chains. Uh, there seems to be a uh, a bit of movement off towards the east as well, as if um, there are more of the same. Well, oh, look, it's Meg Nickelbones. Oh, that's right. <laughs> but you're eleventh level, so you're in good shape. You treat as your tongue, boy. Oh, and we don't have our healer. This is gonna be do, fun. Do, do I have time to drink something before initiative happens? Um, well, they're not attacking just yet. Uh, in fact, you can hear them uh, as they're cackling. It's whispering, uh, echoing off the side of the caverns. Um, you can also sense that uh, there is a bit of smog or fog coming from that direction as well. Do you want me to roll initiative as well, or no? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead. Because right. you are, at this moment, just snapping out of your uh, your haze. You've been drugged until this round. Gotcha. I was not clicking my token because I'm a bad person. It's okay, I'll take that one. <laughs> There's only one better, so I mean, it doesn't really make a difference. It only matters if someone else rolls an 18. Yes, exactly. And if that's the case, I will switch it back. So, <laughs> Michael, it's definitely at least like 10 rounds have passed since combat, correct? Yes. So you can tell as they were cackling, uh, they had already cast a spell, and you see it start to um, cause a, a fog to emanate from the center of this room here. And it's by the second uh, starting to obscure uh, this horrific visage. But uh, Morgan, you do actually get a uh, a few seconds to react before the room is obscured. Uh, da -da -da -da. What? The spell magic? Holy shit! That was long. Yeah. Good lord! Why would you do that to us? <laughs> I didn't know it was that long. Holy shit! Here's, here's the abbreviated version. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, your castle level check 17 is probably not going to do anything. Probably not. It's 10 plus, uh, excuse me, 11 plus castle level is the DC. Wait, are we in initiative order right now? Uh, yeah. Oh, are we in, yes. are we going to order it properly? And uh, no, this was just we a will, surprise. But, oh. Right, oh, Oregon okay. is uh, the first to, uh, to act. I missed that. I'm gonna guess I wasn't able to... Yeah, that I... is not high enough to actually stop this. Well... It was worth it. 
Okay, uh, that begins the turn order. Right, so, uh, Nergrim, you are first. Nergrim is going to pull out a vial and drink it. What does that vial contain? A mutagen. And then he's going to run up to here. It contains a baby. What's the visibility like down here? Well, after Nergrim's turn, it is completely obscured. Oh, great. Bum bum bum. Alright, that's, that's my turn. Nergrim and Morrigan, can you see um, any anywhere past the five foot mark? I can see the entire map right now. You can. Yeah, okay. I can see literally everything. I can see everything. All right. But yeah, now I can see like everything's darker, but like I can see a circle of. Yeah, I, I can see what I'm supposed to be able to see right now. Like, I can uh, still see... We can see everything, except we have a bright five-foot area around us that shows us what we're supposed to be able to see. Yeah. Okay. Global illumination is working just fine, and they have their own light sources. <laughs> Alright, so, basically, you can't see anything outside of five feet in this area. Okay. I was perfectly fine with it. Alright. I only, I only need to be able to see five feet away to throw a bomb five feet away. Is it Taruk or Taruk? Taruk. Um, Taruk. Is he a dinosaur hunter? Maybe. A little bit. That would be Taruk, though. <laughs> Which is not quite the same thing. Cardassian and Taruk Nor? <laughs> Uh, Tarak is going to... So I'm in a cauldron, you said? Yes, you can swim to the edge of the cauldron and get out. Uh, it will cause you um, an additional five foot of movement to get out of the cauldron. That's just fine. I don't mind in the least. Uh, okay. I'm going to... Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't cost me, like, a move action to swim there and climb out or anything, right? It's part of your move action. Okay, cool. It's difficult to rate. Good deal. So, Tarek is going to scooch over, climb out, land on the ground, and go, Hey! And then just jump up and poke this chick right in both of her eyes. Yes, that's ten feet straight up in the air. <laughs> All right. But dude, you, I can make the acrobatics check, I fucking <laughs> promise. Yes. It's a, it's a DC 40, let's see it. Yeah, no, you can jump up ten forward. feet in the air with that oh, hand. I was oh, you only so got thirty close. feet. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do a thing. Just God, not... is airborne. Iterative attacks at all, so I gotta fix this. Disregard that it says flurry, this is actually appropriate. Bam. Well, that's actually versus CMD, but I'm a bad. <laughs> Attack type, CMD. There we go, that's better. But the numbers are correct? Uh, they should be, yes, they are. So, 42 versus CMD. Okay. Uh, yes, you beat the CMD. What happens? Well, it, uh, she becomes blind, the one that I hit, um, and it takes a full round action for her to remove it. Okay. What is known as the Three Stooges attack. Yeah, pretty much. There we go, that's what that's supposed to be. I'd just like to point out for the record that Japanese Moki is tasty. It's the truth. 
Okay. And that's my turn, I believe. Oh, uh, I will do a swift action to use my key power bark skin. So my AC goes up by four. Sweet. Okay. And now that's my turn. Alright, one second. Oh, uh, I should probably... So she's actually blind for four rounds until she removes it. Fun fact. Action needed to remove. Uh, full round. So she she didn't needs to uh, like get the dust or the. the she. Off I her guess rounds. effectively she has to like rub her eyes out because a goblin just jabbed her in both fucking eyes. And who knows where the hell those thumbs have been? Exactly. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, Morgan. Yeah, Morgan. <laughs> you want to delay? Right. Yeah, well, where are we keeping the the group loot? Is it like among everyone's bags? We just throw it everywhere. That's what we say. I was saying, like, if you want to use something from it? Yeah. Well, theoretically, it should be, you know, distributed. Anything that's in there, other than cure wands, is kind of just at the bottom of someone's bag somewhere. Yeah, I'm thinking of just grabbing one of the ogre hooks. We probably have to yeah. fish around for it. Um. That was a nice pun, by the way. Out. More so for its unintended effects. Except you don't need it. Alright. Move action to find the ogre hook and grab it. And then I'll move where I last saw them. And be like, half, right? And that'll end my turn. Alright. Because it's a double move. Brune, can I get a uh, perception check from you, please? Sweet. All right, you can sense a very cold um, draft coming from the west, or from, actually from your east, and uh, you can hear the small sound of uh, like kind of like wind chimes, and you feel very ominous darkness encroaching upon you. Right. Okay. Well, more the reason to move then. We'll move down this way, approaching to the this misty shroud. And uh, since this like really makes his beard frazzled, and he doesn't like that, so he's gonna try to dispel it. It really makes his beard frazzled. And that doesn't do shit. Because I rolled a two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This one. First, they went through um, great pains to describe these beautiful ladies. So I'd like to share. Okay, so the one that is in front of Tarak, she is hulking, humpbacked. She's a hag with oversized talons sprouting from her stumpy arms. The one behind her is tall and thin like a skeleton wrapped in ugly purple flesh and sagging white robe. And the one that's uh, over towards the east, 
Her face is a mass of pustules, which the size of gold pieces, and craters that just weep ooze. She's squat and fat with bulbous breasts that hang almost to her knees. I'm harassed. <laughs> Wait a minute. You want to lick one of those pustules? Maybe just a little. This Anna's hag is going to uh, claw at her eyes. I can't see! So she will take a uh, full round action. This one will look at uh, both Morrigan and Nirgrim. She will say, oh, you look scrumptious enough to eat, as she grabs Morrigan, or at her at least. She misses. Oh, she does miss. She doesn't miss enough to climb okay. her own face out, though. <laughs> so, uh, she will um, attempt to grab at that as well. Still getting used to this uh, C Gen thing. Looking for your CMB. Ah, okay. So she rolls a 26 for CMB. Mm, that misses. Okay. So you are not getting a hug. Yay! Yes. That's why I stopped using it, Mike. I don't like hiding rolls from players. Yeah. Yeah, that's no good. Okay, so um, the hag in the center is going to... squeeze up here. And she is going to use a supernatural ability. There is fog within both rooms. That's just rude. <laughs> it's true. All right, Who does room. that? with us Frankie uh, Frankie was muted <laughs> okay Rip. all right Frankie is going to pull out a a thing and he's going to drink it and then he's going to grow smaller all right drinking um, does that provoke an attack of opportunity for you? Nope. They are extraordinary abilities. Alright. And I am now under the effects of Reduced Person. Hue, hue, hue. There we go. And I'm going to do as best I can to look as annoying as possible. Alright, no roll needed. Tarek. Oh, thanks. <laughs> wow, that. Right. Oh, Shots <laughs> so, fired, huh? You know, I'm just kidding. Wow. <clears throat> I can feel the animosity in here. It's good. Um, 
Tarek is still trying to get all of his stuff ready, so he is scrambling here. But uh, he is then... She is no longer blinded, correct? Correct. Okay. He's going to grin real, real big. And do one of... Yes, that does have everything attached to it. These. I had that as talking to myself. Hold on. <laughs> and of course, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't do any damage, so crits won't fucking matter. <laughs> so all of that, God, is against CMD, which I will eventually fucking remember to change. There we go. All of that's against CMD. Um, it's gonna be probably blind, entangle. Yeah, probably just entangle for the rest of it. Do you have a way to see through? Uh, no. So within 5 feet, it's 20%, and after 5 feet, it's 50%. Yep. Okay, so... so the second, third, and last hit. Potentially hit. Potentially hit. So does a 35 yeah. beat CMD? Yes. How about a 29? Yes. How about a 24? No. Actually, it doesn't matter. So, uh, she is... Hold on, I gotta look this up real quick, just so that I can remember. Uh... She's double entangled, which means that she then becomes... pinned. Okay. The little goblin is pinning a large... And his hag. Very yeah. Cool. She has a little pinky stuff. like twisted around her back. Mm -hmm. he, he basically just jumped up, like grabbed her shirt, threw it over her head, grabbed one of her legs, yanked it out from under her, grabbed both of her arms and pinned them behind her back. Like he was jumping all over the place. Crazy little goblin. All right. She uh, just screams in horror. Sisters! Get this thing off of my back! <laughs> Oregon. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna just assume this. And then I'm going to smite evil the one in front of me. Alright. Take effect. Oh, yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, it is not an outsider. Is it on that? Mm, you can roll a. For purposes of spike, is it on that? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Alright. And then. Oh, this should be interesting. I, everything's good there. <laughs> Crazy roll. <laughs> Then this is just the first one because I had the smiter first, so I can't do it for. For reference, Alex, our paladin has PSTD. Oh yes. I think PTSD. you mean PTSD, but no. I, I understood. Slidexia is fun, okay? Any of those potentially hit? It's just the first one. It's not a full round. Oh. oh okay. Uh, the first one does hit uh, if it goes okay. past. Oh, no, wait. It is a full round. Smite evil is only a sweat. Okay, yeah. So it is a full round. They would all potentially hit. Alright. Uh, they would. Yep. So they all do hit. And that is with your ogre head. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so you... Out of the bag. You've actually made her extremely mad. You can tell by... Uh, she looks at you and she looks down at her, her white robe that was sagging off of her. And you just cut a big gash in her midsection and tore her favorite dress. Brilliant. Was this mist or fog? Ah, uh, this is fog. Okay. Would fire burn fog off? 
Like it does not, m not magical fog. Okay. Alright, so I cannot actually see those two there. Correct. Um, and I imagine I still feel chilly winds from the north. Yeah. Something is happening behind you towards the north. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like this cold. Well, I know there are some things over here. I don't know what. So Rune is going to grab his uh, a, a silver rod from a sheath along his arm and he's going to grasp it firmly while he directs a small fiery bead uh, across the room until it impacts something. Okay. Selectively removing Morigum, Nirgrim, and Vroom for the effects. Right, the uh, ball flame explodes. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, what I did was uh, I created uh, FX. You can see bomb beam breath and FX bomb nova. If you highlight your token, so you guys can use that too if you want to. What? Um, there's macros if you click on your token up at the top. You see FX Beam Breath and FX Bomb Nova. If you want to partake in the fun. Cool. <laughs> I like mine. But uh, anyway, let's see. We have reflex saves of 21. Miss. And miss. So, as the explosion detonates next to this first NS... It's one of the things with Fireball, I don't know if it'll actually reach or not, but it does go around corners. Okay. So I'm going to assume that I threw it against the wall over at this vertices here. Okay. So, Turek might even get in this. Okay, my reflex save is obscene, and I have evasion and improved evasion, so don't you worry, man. Okay, He's you. used to fire. You're just on the outside edge. Oh, okay, cool. No worries, then. Okay. Um, they yell, There is no spellcaster! Lamitar! Labatar! She screams. Oh, and that fire had no effect on this miss, right? It did not. Okay, the uh, the one that's facing or is pinned by Tarek is trying to get out of uh, this wrestling move. <laughs> so she picks up the uh, the goblin and she tries to body slam him. Believe it or not, same thing. Still takes a full round action to get out of, because it's a dirty <laughs> trick. Makes sense. I'm just gonna roll this. No, she cannot. I am okay with that. Okay, uh, this one is going to step down. Front, and she's going to go after either Morgan or Nurgrim if she can see him. That will miss. 
Alright, she is going to uh, just hang there for a moment. And Nergrim's turn. Nergrim is going to five foot step and just throw like try to aim a bomb like back here somewhere. Like in this area. I am for this square. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it actually misses or not. I'm just getting it on the screen there. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, it does hit her. Uh, versus touch there. Uh, that absolutely does. And that's his turn. Okay. Uh, the DC reflex save, uh, and that's just splash. Um, is your splash supposed to be 71? Yeah, uh, splash does minimum damage. I roll okay. 76 for the main, and then 71 for the splash. I was just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tarek, you still have the Ennis uh, in your clutches. Spectacular. So basically. All he does is, like, he grabs one of her, uh, anything that she's wearing, really, and just tucks it over both of her hands, and then cackles gleefully as he scampers right away down over to this one. All right. Uh, and then I'm gonna do thing so that I don't provoke coming in. Where is my skills? There it is. I'm assuming this is... Oh, whoops. I guess I have to do that manually because I have to fix that. Anyway, here's acrobatics. So 44 versus CMD. Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah. He's basically just going to cruise in, run right up on her, and then jump up, grab the back of her top, and just haul it straight over her eyes. <laughs> so, another okay. blind. There it is. 40 versus CMD. All right. Yeah, you do manage to uh, to take the other portion of her dress, and uh, it goes over her eyes. She's only blind for one round. No, we're blind because she's topless, and that's not a pretty sight. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Saved by the fog. <laughs> Morgan. Uh, that is interesting. What so, is know, Ghost Fire? That's double damage. Uh, Rune, you might do a splash. I'm just going to say it's on her and then what? Eight around. So, four is against the wall. Yep. It just hit the wall three times. It, ding, basically, she starts hallucinating and she tries her damnedest to kill whatever it is that she thinks she's seeing. Huh. Fair yeah. enough. Don't hang around our paladin. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Brune. Not liking at all the sound of something being beckoned and called for from an area we've not yet explored. He will pick his way southwards. A wall. 25. in the edge of the cloud. Do I see anything coming from the south? Um, you see Ceres coming up. And there's still something up here that I don't know what it is. And I don't want to just lob another fireball in here, so I'm going to try to dispel it again. Okay. That might actually work. It does. Oh, we can see. Oh, dear lord, I wish I could do that. It's hideous. Oh, 
Ah, oh, shit. I'm gonna take it right there in front of my face, too. Tark scowls and goes, I'm helping! <laughs> uh, does that mean we get our vision back? Yes. Aw, oh, yes. Alright, the other Anna's hag is, um, let's see. Do you have a special ability to bind them? No, you... it's the okay. same thing. Full round action, they can get rid of it. Alright, that's what she'll do. Lamata! She'll scream. Come help us! Help the sisters! And uh, the other Annis uh, looks around. She is completely surrounded. Uh, she looks confused. She can't see anything. And she begins to um, lash out in random direction. And you can uh, do the splash damage if you want to. We'll see which square she lurches at. God damn it. Yes. Looks like Morrigan's gonna get it. First one hits. Okay. Yeah, she is still blinded, so, uh, yeah. Sweet. Claws swing over your head. Sure, Tark Jr. cackles and bounces up and down and cheers. Everyone just cringes and shivers as her nails scrape along the stone walls like a blackboard. Uh, no, I'm scared. Just a phantom. Nerdery. <laughs> Alright, Nerdery is going to drink another vial. Alright. Uh, you can barely see uh, this floating uh, from the the northern tunnel, Burn. So he's still in line of effect. Gotcha. Yeah. Just a moment. Screen's still pretty dark. Yeah. Um, let me, yeah, let me fix yours. Yay. Oh. Hello, precious. How are you doing today? have had his head of disguise on while he was in the pot? Oh, definitely fucking not. So, you definitely look like a goblin now. He was yes. drugged. <laughs> he looks like a goblin, but he also looks like a goblin that just helped you. Yes, for now. <laughs> well, 
Perhaps there is just dissension upon the ranks, and they are fighting amongst themselves. They are very fortuitous for us. Okay, so I finally found it. This thing is caked with ice as it starts floating. His left hand looks almost to be a claw made of icicles, and his brow is decorated with a crown of ice as well. Uh, he is actually holding a bow as he's uh, floating. Oh god, it's the Lich King. Oh, I remember this guy. <laughs> oh god, it is That's Lich all King. I was gonna say. That's a pretty cool image. I would not want to meet him in a dark alley, that's for sure. I am uh, appropriately intimidated now. Thank you, mate. Anything I can do. So he is going to let loose the, uh, the bow he has. Which, you might not have guessed it, has ice properties. Wicked cover going on. Looks like some cover to me. Yep, we got two points. It's half cover, I believe. I don't think I've used any of my stone skin. <laughs> oh no, wait, I have. I have. I know, I definitely have. Not a lot, but I have. Alright, so an icy arrow bolts towards uh, Brune, but uh, you do have cover. So it just barely nicks off this wall and deflects into yeah. the body of the ogre at my feet instead. What happens to the body when the arrow hits it? Um, as the arrow slams into it, uh, you can see an explosion of ice shards. Right. It would behoove me not to be hit by that. Okay. Uh, we have some issues to the north. Might I direct your attention there? Just a moment, Brune. Is there anything going before me? Just to check. No, nah, you're next. Okay. Uh, Tarek is going to laugh and clap and, and go, More friends! And then probably do another flurry, honestly. Um, she is she's, she's still blind, right? Oh no, it, it ran out because it only lasts one round. So, the first one is going to be blinded. Uh, the other four are going to be... Let's do second. You are flanking. Yes, so I actually get more bonuses on this. This is going to be plus four to what I roll here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so the lowest, hit. yeah. So she's nauseated. Uh, and blind. So, the blind lasts two rounds, the nauseated lasts one round, plus one for each five that the roll beat per CMD. What's the nauseated one? Uh, so if I hit somebody who is sickened with another sickened, they become nauseated. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Um, she's not happy. Anything else? <laughs> By she, she means no. me. She means my... That's, but <laughs> that's it for her. Um, yeah, that's it. Alright. Morgan. Alright. Um, she can see that Nirgrim and this new goblin thing obviously has this chick. So she'll drop the hook and then pull out her, uh, bow as she moves over so she can see this guy which is pretty much here um and then smite evil 
Uh, he's lawful good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> So, Tix Hook, is he an outsider or undead? He is undead. Sweet. Just gotta look up undead stuff. Okay, so it's just gonna be the one attack, which I have for. Uh, lethal damage. And then... Bonus damage on the first successful crack increases two points per level. So another 22. Whoa, <laughs> shit. Wow. Did you just kill this thing in one shot? What the fuck? Let's double check this to make sure that smite actually multiplies on a crit. <laughs> Damn! No, cause... yeah. It doesn't mention it, so it does. Yeah. Well, that was wow, so Morgan steps over across the, uh, the small tunnel here and she draws back and she fires one fell arrow and it lands into the center and the forehead of this thing and it cracks the crown upon its uh, its head and the arrow just lodges into it as the body starts to slowly dissolve into the ground uh, beneath it you can see smoke and icy mist flow up from uh, from above and then below that you actually see the naked body of a human and it's drenched in uh, cold and ice. Brune. <laughs> this intrigues me. What is it that we're dealing with? You see that this is, well, you'd actually have to uh, to go up and look at it to be able to uh, to figure anything out. I'm no, going to move. I can't see it from here. Uh, not close enough for you to determine exactly what it is. Is it like from there. ground or is it like another body that's animated and doing things? It looks like a dead human on the ground. Okay. Take care of it, Rune. Yes. Remind me not. Oh wait, hold on. We still have witches. Yeah. We <laughs> kind of forgot about that. <laughs> That's totally in character. Get over there. <laughs> um. Right. So seeing that that thing is is disabled, whatever it is, and a reminder to self: do not piss Morgan off. Um. One of these days, it might actually register as evil. How bad off is this witchy lady looking? Yeah, so she has a massive um, slice down the, the front of her, and she's uh, curled over retching as uh, a goblin has uh, his wide mouth grin on top of her, just uh, strangling her and um, ripping off various portions of her. Um, adornments and using them to uh, further bind her. Okay, so we'll make her life even more miserable then. And uh, <laughs> we, we will stagger her, or attempt to. Fifteen touch. Alright, it hits the nineteen touch, and that is enough to make her fall over to the side just in time for Tarek to jump off of her back. As a, as a icy sphere of you know, solid frozen water launches across the air and just slams into the base of her throat, crushing her larynx. 
Well, no, that's just rude. But effective. All right. Uh, this one steps out of the smoke just as you've landed back onto the ground, Tarek. And she looks over at her fallen sisters and she says, Well, I was the prettiest one anyway. Leave now. I'll let you all live. No. <laughs> no. I, I don't think so. Oh, that's, that's funny. She's a funny <laughs> one. I like this one. She's... Um, she has a guarded claw up to her and she looks as imposing as she possibly can. Nergrim. Nergrim has a baby in his arms, so if someone <laughs> could reposition me and click the bomb macro, I would like to throw a bomb at the last remaining witch. Probably not from within melee range like that. I don't care. I get up the fuck? Oh. Wait, close quarters through hour. Look at you, fancy alchemist. No, I just don't think she could hit me. And even if oh. she did, I don't think she could hurt me. Oh uh, yeah, just uh, click the bomb macro. Sorry, I'm, I'm actually over at the crib right now. I'm not even at the computer. You should be ashamed. I should be. Alright, with an attack of 25 versus touch, it easily hits. Uh, the initial damage is, uh, and this is fire damage, so... Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So it hits her hand as it explodes. She almost catches it, but it explodes as it hits her palm, and it just runs down the length of her arm, and she's looking at you in stark surprise as her arm is on fire, and she screams again, Leave! I'll call out, not so pretty now, huh? I'm mounting! Alright, Terry. <laughs> Damn it, Mike. Couldn't help it, huh? <sighs> Tarek is going to bounce forward up the steps five feet, and then wish that his buddy was a little bit closer so that he could get flanking, but alas, no such luck. And, um... Well, did she look like she was readying a spell or something, or was just trying to be intimidating? Just trying to be intimidating. Oh, all right. Well, fuck this bitch. Uh, we're gonna punch her, bunch. Where's that? There it is. That was very <laughs> poorly done. Let's do that again, shall we? I don't think we don't run bad crits in this game, right? No. Oh, okay. Well, then disregard that third one there. Yeah, it's just a miss for the first one. The second one uh, does connect. Woo! And uh, with 18 damage, you um, you hit her right into the side of the leg, and you can tell that a bone probably snapped, and she kind of catches herself at the last moment. She's still standing. Ow. And just in case... Uh, that counts as piercing magic, silver, cold iron, and waffle. Did you say and waffle? Yes, and waffle. Sweet. Also lawful. <laughs> but I mean... <laughs> probably just a little. Chocolate chip or, or blueberry? No, no, no. Blueberry. Blueberry. Come on. Cool. Uh, well, she has uh, vulnerability to blueberry. Uh, so. I knew it. <laughs> Actually, supposed to be bludgeoning. I'm just an idiot. Came from, huh? It's an allergy. She yeah, ate one too many. Make your uh, unarmed strikes be piercing. Technically, they could be. Uh, at some point, I'm going to pick up a feat that makes them that, but I don't have it yet, so it doesn't matter. Ah. It's yeah, that's the uh, that's the Hamatsu strike, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. I I used to run a Hamatsu monk. They're super no, I can't fun. see the edges because they of are. the lady, but I'm pretty sure I can shoot her from here, right? Yeah. Um, and I'll be aiming for this square here, okay. just in case. You're gonna shoot me right in the ass. I just know it. Oh, got some. Oh, lethal going. again. Unfortunately, no extra. Cause I'm not gonna waste a, yet another smite. Oh, Twenty-seven. Okay. 
That's enough to pin the arrow through her shoulder as she reels back and falls into the wall behind her and she closes her eyes. As she's grasping uh, from the other hand, a small hand mirror. No. Wow. Alrighty then. Tark immediately just wades into this room to try and find his crap. Okay. Uh, this fog dissipates. And in a corner, next to other um, soiled linens, you find all of your items. All right. Well, Tarak promptly goes and gets dressed. Okay. He doesn't look much better than when he was naked a moment ago, but, I mean, you take what you can get. He is a goblin. And then, in literally six seconds, he zips down over here, Stops by Nergum and goes, Ooh, what are you? You're really tiny. And then zips on over here. Stops by Morrigan and goes, Hey, you're really big. Crazy long shanks. And then zips on over here. Runs a circle around Vroon. And goes, You got some weird hair on your face there, mister. And then zips on back over here and goes, We're friends now. Uh. What? Okay, where do you come from? What are you doing here? It seems to be some form of goblinoid, but I've never seen one act like this. Uh, Tark kind of shrugs. He goes, I woke up in the pot? I'm not quite sure. It's an improvement. Do we kill it? I don't know. Uh... Detect evil? It doesn't detect as evil. Hmm. I'm meaning to get a, like, Morgan, like, leans in and looks really close at you. He, he smiles impressed. really big. Which is really freaky on a goblin if you've ever seen him. <laughs> oh, yeah. So <laughs> let, me, let me grab that picture. Hold on. I'll link it in chat, and you can see just how many teeth you're looking at square in the face. So this is this is what you're getting up close at. Yeah. What? So do what is your it? name, strange little creature? Well, once upon a time, I met a whole bunch of Longshanks, and they gave me a name. And it's not my actual name, but apparently Longshanks like naming things. So I'm Tark Junior. Junior, and who is the Tark Senior then? That one of the long shanks. And how come you to be here? I, I don't know. I woke up in a pot. I think they were going to try and eat me. Didn't work out in their favor. Yes, apparently. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Who's also, this we're, guy? We're the same size right now. My guy talks really high pitched when he's small. That's. Awkward. You should yeah. inhale less helium. <laughs> you sound like a greased up deaf guy almost. Oh, more Nilgrim, uh, perhaps you should revert to your regular size, lest our new uh, friend here decide he wants a snack. How hurt I'm, is I'm, I'm as big as him. Um, I'm not hurt at all. <laughs> also, okay. I'm like this for the next 10 minutes. Oh. Small size? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm small size. Well, he's pint size. Hey, I say. Uh, is that a short joke? A little bit. We gather our things and get out of here before more of those ghost things show up. Well, from what I know of such things, they are incredibly rare. I doubt there's more than the one. Especially since these three. Hags seem to call it by name. I would like to spend at least a few moments searching these giants and their 
altar over there for clues as to where the plans might be. I doubt it is an isolated clan of giants here. Oh, well, let's hurry it up. Take a look around. The stalling long enough to give Mike time to post the loot. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say, uh, Tarek Jr. runs around and takes all their shit, but apparently you got me. Who speaks giant? I do. Okay, so when you pick up this note and go to read it, Tarek kind of like half climbs up you and your robes, or I'm assuming they're robes. You're a sorcerer, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he, he like half climbs up you and your robes to look at the, the paper and then shrieks and zips across the room uh, shouting all sorts of nonsense about don't read the thing because it'll take all of your words away from you and you won't be able to speak ever again and just uh, a whole bunch of bullshit, really. I but should warn you that if you try to take writing or scrolls away from uh, Rune, that might not end well for you. Oh, he didn't try and take it. He was just yelling to okay. not do it. Calm yourself, strange little creature. Oops. Read this already. And you just hold it like over your head. <laughs> trying to okay. Read Baal, latest contact with Tarek. Uh, Tarek Tinas? That's a weird. Tarek Tinas. Yeah, they, they need an extra vowel in there. Tarek Tinas indicates that he has narrowed the search. He believes a human town called Sandpoint could hide what my lord seeks. Taroctinus would lead several of his people as well as the dragon on a raid into the town soon. Oh my. When they return, they may be pursued, and I may need your ogre slave's aid in Taroctinus's retreat to Jorgenfist. Be ready to return at my command. Um, um, my friends, this does not bode well. You need to have like way to Sandpoint post haste. There's an invasion yeah. of giants incoming. They must be warned. And a dragon? Indeed. After uh, after Bruin reads the note, Yergrim's gonna look at Tarek and then mime that he can't speak anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Tarek wails and runs in circles and goes, I tried to tell you! That earns an eye roll or two from Bruin, I'm sure. There is just one small issue, and she'll take a look at Turk. He, he grinds to a halt when the topic changes, because let's be real, his attention span isn't that long. <laughs> hey, is that a short joke? How are we to get the goblin in the sand point? And then he looks at you and grins really big and goes, It's okay, I got a trick! and then grabs either side of his hat and pulls it down really low over either side of his head and then suddenly he's a halfling. Interesting. Hey Mike, the sack of onyx, is that uh, spell component stuff or is that money stuff? Uh, that is spell component stuff for raising dead. Or uh, creating undead. Alright, is there a, a quantity associated with that? Yeah, there is uh, 600 gold pieces worth of onyx gems. Alright, cool. Does, does that mean that I can play a necromancer now? <laughs> you, of all people, are not allowed to play necromancers. <laughs> I saw how that went. You really think that we're going to let you do it again? That, that was partly my fault. Yeah, that was Brittany's fault. She gave me the demon. <laughs> yeah. That is very true. The, the lesson to learn here is when Frankie asks for something and sounds excited, you say no. <laughs> and... Sure, Nergum, you can have the bow. Yeah. Now I got something for when I run out of bombs. It's a pretty good bow, though. I was going to say, it it's is. actually a really nice bow. With and I got the... On it? Yeah, Mike, is there a, it is composite. Is there a strength rating? Uh, whatever his strength is, one second. 
If not, I mean, you can, uh, Frankie, you can always just slap an adaptive enchant on it next time you get to town. 16? Looks like. Okay, so it's past 3. Too high and for me. What is my strength? Um, my strength is currently. 8? It's just a negative two, man. It's not that big a deal. I know. Well, well, you can just make it adaptive when you get to town, and then it doesn't matter. Exactly. And you can still use it when you hulk out. If you hulk out. When I hulk out, my strength becomes a 12. Eh, it's still a plus one. Yeah, you're probably better off selling that thing and getting a something more suitable. Either that or I could trade in bows. Yeah, you can have it if you want it. I don't actually care that much. Oh, I think you got a good thing going with that, uh... The Merciful? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we could sell it and then get you something better. Something more appropriate for you. Yep, yep. Hold on to it for now. Uh, we'll figure out what to do with it afterwards. The, uh, hags themselves, that's the loot from them. Did this ghosty guy have anything special? Oh, that was the bow. Never mind. I'm rambling. Um... You mentioned that the this ghostly figure turned into a human, or human-like person when he fell. Is there any more details to be gleaned from him? Like, is the crown recognizable, or any hint as to his origin or identity? Yeah, you're welcome to make a, uh, a history or local knowledge check. Damn. I'm guessing you're going to history. Okay. You can tell by a tattoo on his arm that uh, it is the same insignia as the Black Arrows from Fort Rannick. And now it makes perfect sense. This is um, the commander, um, Lamatar. Oh, this is the one that got away. So I'm completely misremembering that. Yes, you, you remember that Lamatar Baden. Um, had had a secret love affair with a a nymph that was in the Shimmer Glens, and he was lured away at a a time that was very uh, it was actually not a very good time for the fort because that's when the ogres had attacked, and there was speculation that he was uh, he was actually. <sighs> led to do that because of the impending ogre um, invasion. It's quite an interesting tale, this one. <clears throat> he uh, naturally relates most of that, probably in a somewhat nasal and you know, scholarly fashion, as though he's reciting from a history book. And of course this naturally led to the fall, or contributed greatly to the fall of Fort Rannick. At least the first fall in the most recent years. The consequences of that are still being felt by the region. Of course. Hmm. But regardless, well, it seems our work here is finished. I got my memories back. Yeah, Ner Nergrim's kind of an oddball. <laughs> Let's head out. Go to Magamar, collect our prize, leave word there of what we found out, and then head to Sandpoint. Um, that's kind of like opposite. No, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sandpoint is closer than Magnamar. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do strongly recommend that we make all due haste to Sandpoint. Perhaps take a ferry or investigate even magical means of travel. No, we have horses, remember. I'm actually curious how far my dimension door goes these days. Does it go 34.7 feet? Yeah, it's really... you could do that in one, <laughs> one round. Uh, it goes 840 feet a spell. Take three people with me. 
if I'm small and Nurgrim is also small, do we count as one person together? You do, yes. Sweet! It's it's based off of medium sized creatures. Larger take more slots, etc. Yeah. Um, so Morgan, Saris, you, Nurgrim, and Turk. I guess we leave our horses. How how far actually is this, Mike? And if it's a rough question, we can just forego this and travel by normal means. One hundred and ninety-six. He's he's Mine. still trying to work it out. He needs like another yeah. little bit. Static line, and then move the line around. He's he's trying to get the uh, distance correct on the map. Oh, because there's the little key down at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. So this is about two hundred and. That's that's close enough. About two hundred twenty-five, two hundred fifty, give or take. 250 ish. So let's see, 241 miles is. Oh, why did they do that to me? One mile is 500. Yeah, no. We're taking horses. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, I'm gonna. We ha we're gonna have downtime for like stopping and camping and stuff, right? Yep. Awesome. Um, anyone who wants them, uh, for 25 gold pieces. I can give you a potion that will give you a plus five to initiative checks for uh, 11 minutes at a time. Sorry, give me that one more time? For, well, uh, it's 25 gold pieces for me. For 30 gold pieces, I can. I was waiting for that. I can give you a potion. I can give you potions that will give you plus five to your initiative for eleven minutes. I can make cure light wounds potions. Uh, I can make shield potions. Mm. Uh, blur bark skin fly. Yeah, but those ones cost more than twenty five gold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't complain about a blur potion, though. How much would that cost? Uh, blur is a level 2 spell, so it would cost you 300 gold pieces. Not bad. To buy from regular market. Yeah, no, no. and that to lasts buy, for... To buy from regular market, it would be 400 gold pieces. So you save 100 gold. No, oh, wait, I'm... 300. Oh, I'm looking at the sorcerer chart. Okay, that's why. Yeah, it would cost you 300 to buy from the market, 200 to buy from me. Cool. Uh, Those generally last about 5 minutes. The blur ones do? Mm -hmm. Level 2 spells, gotta be level 5 caster. And it's minutes per... No, I set... To be level I, three? I set the caster level when I cast the spell, so the ca or when I brew the potion. So the spell is brewed at an 11th caster level. That does not sound right. That's definitely wrong. That would be horribly, horribly broken. When you craft something, you, it's assumed that you normally craft it at the lowest possible caster level to make it. If you want to craft it at a higher spell level or a higher caster level, you can do yeah, that, no. but it costs more. You're, you're missing this part right here. There, bud. Here you go. Level of the spell, caster level that you select, times 50. The same That's way, why. Same okay. way scroll, scrolls work. You know, you can make a level 10 scroll, but it costs a fucking huge fortune. Otherwise, so theoretically, you could make that level 11. It would just be, let's see, 2 times 11 times 50. Uh, 1,100 gold. So 550 for me, so 650 for you. That, that times 50 is your crafting cost. Is it? Oh wait, no, 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 no. No, no, no it's you're half right. of that. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. You're, right. you're right. I think they have the scrolls section listed slightly. Probably. 
That nigger's but, not gonna get for you just that cost. Yeah. That's what he's trying to find out. Because <laughs> he really, really wants his Iron Man suit. Uh, um, yeah. um, if everyone wants, I can post a list of my spells in the chat and you can figure out what cast will level and stuff that you want them at. Actually, what you could do is just put them, like Mark's about to say, on your uh, description portion of your character sheet, and we can pull that up and look at it. Let's see, on my description portion of my character sheet, I have, like, a page and a half of backstory. So just put it below that. Or above that. Here. Whichever. Is that actually what your character looks like, by the way? The, the half-work now? Yeah, yeah. My character is now half-work. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I could probably fly ahead and get there ahead of time, maybe warn the town while you guys tr catch up on, on horses. I, Technically, I, I can run faster than a horse, so, <laughs> yeah, about that. I could actually run as fast as you can fly unless you have Everland Flight. Uh, which I do, which is 40 feet. Oh, okay. Um, well, I could still run faster than that. Never mind. Yeah. Well, over terrain and mountains and woods and all that fun stuff. Yes, but, um, that's true. I think our, our primary goal should be just get haul ass and get over to Sandpoint as fast as possible. Since yeah. it's on the way, we should stop at Fort Randick and Turtleback Ferry and have them send runners to uh, Magnamar and like neighboring settlements like Wardle and Niber to What was that other get reinforcements area that they were talking about that they were going to fall back to? There was another town that it said. Uh, yeah, that was um, Jorgenfist. Yeah, Jorgenfist. Not, I don't remember exactly where that is, actually. Um, if I can offer an alternative suggestion... We could pick up a scroll of teleport. You'd think that. The settlements that were around are small and do not have a lot of magic available. Ah, fair enough. Turtleback Ferry is the largest settlement near us, and we are lucky to get, like, level 1 scrolls out of them. Gotcha. Okay. Unless Mike wants to say otherwise, of course. No, that is uh, extremely reasonable. Um, so, is everyone cool with that recommendation, or any other suggestions? Yep. Uh, you fly ahead, we stop at Turtleback, and tell them what's going on and have them send runners to Magnamar or wherever else, and then we run the horses ragged. Yep, maybe pick up an extra pair of horses from, uh, you know, extra horse for each person from... Fort Rannick, so you can uh, swap horses as you're going, give them a rest. Which is extraordinarily common to do. If Turtleback Ferry would have another set. I was, I was thinking of the Fort. Or Wardle. Yeah. yeah. Alright, yeah. Okay. So, Vroom flies ahead to Sandpoint, we go to Turtleback, have them send runners to Bangamar and then I don't know, Wardle and Nybar and then we run the ha horses to Wardle swap out horses and then run them to the same point Would it be faster to take a boat from Turtleback Ferry down to Wardle and then get horses there? I mean we are on the water Mm, is this downflowing, Mike? Yeah, it, it always flows toward the sea. Mm -hmm. That's the way that rivers work. Yeah, so if you see the... Um, well, actually, where are you? But the big blue thing, right there. So. I, can con I can confirm that that is the way it works, because uh, Storval Fall has a waterfall. Or Storval Plateau has a giant waterfall that runs down. Yeah. So this I know is the that dam, and it's coming up from, um, goes towards Turtleback Ferry from Storval Plateau. I'm just, I'm not sure if it would be, uh, time efficient to just do it by, uh, 
ship or by horse. Because like well, we have, we have to look up the how fast a sh ship could travel compared to the horses. Traditionally, ship travel is significantly faster than land travel. It would take a week uh, by ship to get back to Magnamar. Two weeks on land. Yeah. There you go. So let's do would, that. Then. Would Turtleback have a a ship we could use? Uh, Turtleback does have some boats. Not exactly a uh, ship. Um, it does give you a good uh, deal on a slightly used sunken barge with uh, gambling tables. <laughs> sunken? <laughs> I, I got it after a second. I was like, wait, hold on. What do you mean a sunken barge? Is that like some fancy? And then it clicked. And I was like, god damn it. <laughs> okay, what about Pendaka? Have a... Yeah, so between uh, Turtleback Ferry and Pendaka, you would be able to uh, to rustle up a, uh, a fairly good size river boat. Okay, of course, offering our uh, horses as trade. Well, actually, the uh, the people of Turtleback Ferry, seeing you um, arrive and uh, hearing of the. Um, the amazing feats that you've done, and now you see that Turtleback Ferry is actually uh, finally devoid of the several feet of water that it was under <laughs> previously. Um, they do what they can to bring up the funds to allow you to have that boat for free, and uh, they ship you off with as much um, food and drink as you can carry, and with their blessing. Would we be able to uh, bring the horses about uh, onto the, the ship? On the boat, no. The boat is not large enough to bring an extra four horses. Okay. Um, we'll trade them horses for a boat, and then we'll yeah. pick up more horses when we get to, what was it, Wardle or whatever? Wardle. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, Vroon, you are flying at what speed? Maximum speed, 80 feet per round. 800 feet per minute. Couldn't you technically do that on everybody? Overland flight is self only. Oh, okay. The only reason I even have it is just because it's a bonus spell for my bloodline. Gotcha. Um, 800 foot per minute is 9.9 uh, .9 miles per hour. And we figured it was 250 miles, so about 27 hours to get there non stop. Okay, so you're flying through the night. I'll be stopping halfway to get my um, rope trick going to get some sleep. I have a ring of sustenance, so I only need two hours, and I'll continue on. So I'll be there in 30 hours. Okay. So technically you could just stop at Viper Wall, which is right in the middle. Oh, yeah, stop at Viper Wall, tell them what's going on. I could. I don't know what the politics are, so I will totally go ahead and do that. Okay. I do want to get to Sandpoint, like, fast to give them chance to, you know, actually f skip fiber wall because I want to get to Sandpoint as fast as possible so they can start building uh, defenses because they have a dragon incoming. That's not something you can just defend against by running up on the wall. That is true. So I'm going to bust my ass to get to Sandpoint and then I will go to Magnamar and get them to send reinforcements, and then I'll go back to the same point. I'll wait for you guys while I'm helping shore up defenses in, this, in the town. Are you, are you gonna Are you gonna teach the men? I'm gonna teach some engineering. <laughs> I'm going to talk to the clerics <laughs> and the guards, and maybe uh, help them with some kind of arcane defenses. I don't know, but. Uh, Froon will lend his, his vast intellect to the task of how best to defend a Hodunk trade town from a dragon and a giant invasion. Maybe All dig right. Dig some pits, you know, some actual physical spiked pits, or, uh, <laughs> you know, arrange for, you know, 
the settler, the the actual populace of the town to take shelter under the tunnels beneath the glassworks, um, move provisions and food, and you know put buckets of sand and water along all along the streets and next to houses so they can help put out fires. All these sorts of things. All oh, while we're having a trip down the river. With lots of food and drink, apparently. So you're having a party party barge. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> while while hey. Prune's pulling a Dragon Ball Z flying across the sky. <laughs> hey, Mike. <laughs> can, you, uh, can you give me a blank handout that everybody can see? Yep. Awesome. So many people. Yeah, thanks. Of course. All right, so you get to town after a day, a little over a day. Um, it is high noon by the time you get back to Sandpoint. And it's actually kind of refreshing when you get here. Um, it's like all of the cares and the worries of the world are now gone. Uh, people are back to their daily routines. Uh, you see um, people out on the um, in front of the cathedral uh, continuing to sell their wares and have a bit of a, a mini festival. Actually, it seems to be a daily ritual now, ever since the, uh, the goblin curse has uh, subsided. Wow. Uh, when I'm you, triggered. <laughs> when you uh, when you fly overhead, um, you get to a point, and a few of the the townsfolk look up, and uh, you see some of the children start pointing and grabbing at their parents' clothes, and look, look, it's flying. As he approaches uh, the same point, uh, he makes a point of flying uh, a little high so you can get a, a very good view of the landscape and the surrounding terrain, uh, mentally fixing a, a remembrance of the area so you can use it as a, a map or for planning approaches and whatnot. Um, you have similar like that, really. Um, <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, there's there's two bridges and only one land entrance to the place, so hmm. Chances are the attack's gonna come from up there. Bring the bridge. Um and then he's gonna you know fly on down to the uh what do you call it? The constable's office, Sheriff Hemlock's Okay. Ha uh, jailhouse or office or whatever you call it, I forgot what the term was. Uh, that is the garrison. The garrison. And the, and the town hall. Excellent. Is anyone uh, rushing out to, to meet him? Yes. As soon as you start um, causing a, a spectacle, um, several people are um, yelling out, Hey, look! And... Uh, Finally, you attract the attention of some of the town guard who rush over towards the garrison, and uh, you see a um, kind of balding, dark-skinned man come out who's wearing a uh, thick, heavy chainmail. Um, and I don't believe Vroon has ever been here, has he? Vroon has been in, in Sandpoint. This is where he yeah. started. Okay. The, the party at the time had met Vroon and a very nervous... Uh, fidgeting blonde haired gentleman uh, hanging out in the dragon hide or I never fucking remember the name of that damn place the dragon something in uh, well fortunately it's right on the map yeah, I'm looking for it <laughs> I never remember where the hell in town it is um, but anyway the uh, the inn with uh, uh, oh my my brain doesn't work today. 
Well, it has been a while. Um, Amico is who Amico. you're talking about. Thank you. I can visualize the, the character's image and what they're all about entirely, but I cannot remember the damn names. Um, so, Amico's Bar, uh, which was the dragon something in. Uh, this is where the, the existing, or what's left of the existing party, met before, uh, the, you know, right after a certain rat gunslinger had been stomped on. The Rusty Dragon Inn. Rusty Dragon, there you go. Yeah. Lusty Dragon, Rusty Dragon, I never remember because there's so many jokes about it. It's um, like Rusty Dragon. Yep, exactly. But in any case, uh... I imagine I recognize this as Sheriff Hemlock. Yes, you do. And he will recognize you as well, then. Ah, it is good. You're not wasting any time. I've just flown here over the last day, and I assure you, my arms are not tired, so let's skip the pleasantries. You must rally your troops in the garrison. You have a, a giant invasion coming, and I do not mean the size of the invasion. I mean quite literally, giants are going to be invading Sandpoint. Perhaps we should discuss the details of this inside. And very imperiously, Rune walks past the sheriff into the garrison, assuming that the sheriff will follow him. Mikey. Yeah, I totally broke my key. We should be ashamed. People, man. Can you not hear me? There we go. I can now. <laughs> oh. My mic broke, sorry. It's all good. I knew I broke something. Alright, so uh, as you walk by him um, with your um, nonchalantness or um, disrespect almost um, you could tell normally uh, he is a man that demands respect but given the circumstances he actually uh, looks over you uh, looks back to you and starts following you uh, you can tell that he's calculating in his mind his next steps um, but you also can tell that um, the way that he's looking at you um, you can tell that um, his demeanor, usually just a uh, placid, um, emotionless demeanor, he's actually frazzled a bit. Um, you can tell that the sides of his mouth are going down and he's getting very brooding looking. Uh, he's following you um, pretty closely, as a matter of fact, almost edging you to get in further to the garrison. You said a dragon? I was going to mention that later, but yes. Uh, perhaps you should send one of your lackeys to fetch the mayor. I imagine she has some say in this. A man standing um, to the side, um, visibly shaken by the mention of such a terrible beast, uh, looks to Sheriff Hemlock and then looks at you. And uh, Hemlock just gives him a slight, slight nod and the man just runs off. So as soon as we're, we're inside and, and situated in his office, uh, Vroon just um, stands there with his arms crossed, his toe tapping, waiting for the mayor to actually show up. All right, it takes about 10 minutes before the mayor does walk in with a small entourage. Um, some older men along with her. You certainly took your time. Let us not waste any f any more. We apologize. News. Yes, continue. She says. There's some rather dire news that involves your small settlement here. Unfortunately, to be even 
intercepted some communications with the local giant clans as we are clearing them out of one of the neighboring provinces. It seems that there is a planned invasion force of giants and, yes, a dragon to invade Sandpoint in search of some artifact or similar knowledge that they believe is to be found beneath this town. You must ready yourselves post haste for such an invasion if you have any hope of survival. Personally, I suggest you just flee. When do you expect this invasion? You can tell that uh, she actually loses her, her voice for a moment. And then she kind of clears it up and she puffs up her chest and just like, when do you expect this invasion? Froon will hand uh, her the missive uh, addressed to Barl. It's like, this is all that we have to go on. Now, I she, uh, spent good. great personal effort and much of my arcane might arrive here much sooner than you might expect. It, to it took me 30 hours instead of nearly a month to get here. So hopefully that will be enough time to actually prepare. So like a week and a half, by the way. To get there. <laughs> <laughs> Most of these people haven't even left the same point before. <laughs> there. Maya, we had a hard enough time defending against the goblins, says um, Hemlock. I don't see a way around the giants. I think our fate is intertwined with whatever the heroes might have up their sleeves. It is true, the rest of my companions are en route, but I assure you by the time that they actually arrive, they may not be in time. Or if they do arrive in time, it may not be much longer before the invasion forces directly behind them. I strongly recommend that either you decide to evacuate the city, or make what preparations you can to help defend its gates. Special consideration needs be made for a dragon, of course. I suppose you have giant ballistae laying around this town? No, we've never had need of such, says Hemlock. Well, I'll leave it to you, Mayor. It is your decision, as... Um, Mayor Deverin looks to you. We have never had such a terrible atrocity befall this place. Honestly, what would you do if you were mayor? I would send the citizen citizenry west to Magnamar while posting what guards and garrisons and midmen that you can gather to defend what's left of the town. Certain preparations could be made, such as provisions beneath the tunnels of the glassworks. I'm sure you've cleared those out since we were last here. Sand and water by various building, important building structures to prevent fire. Construct or acquire ballistae, catapults and such. Weapons suitable to holding off creatures of giant size or perhaps even a flying dragon. Of course, the reality of such beasts is they could simply stay in the air and be immune to anything that we might throw at them. So, you might want to contrive of some solution to attract the dragon to land somewhere. Then you might have a chance. Alright. Well, we must make haste. Brune, we appreciate your warning, and if you would like to stay around, we would be very happy to receive you. Um, we have much work to do, though. I will be continuing on to Magnamar post-haste as soon as our initial discussions are done here to request reinforcements and what arcane and clerical aid they may be able to provide. I imagine a host, even a small grouping of arcane magic users and clerics for healing would be of great assistance in such, fun, in such times. However, there's no guarantee that they'll be able to make it here in time, let alone the political situation as it is, if they'll even send someone. Uh, you, Mayor, do you have the ability to request aid from 
or neighboring cities? Yes, of course. We have. Um, we are in the coalition with Magnamar, as a matter of fact. But may I suggest that you take advantage of those abilities and write up whatever documents that are required to call upon the aid of your neighbors? I will take it upon myself, of course, to deliver these missives. I doubt any of your runners are faster than I am. Naturally. Well, I will do so at once. Please excuse me. I have much to do, and I will return. Rune will turn to Hemlock and say, I strongly suggest that you recruit some of your quartermasters and other officials to organize the distribution of supplies and arrange for the evacuation of the city, if that is the choice that you wish to make. Understood. I will think upon it and give the answer. Well, think quickly, man. They could be here tomorrow, for all we know. All right, so he begins to brood for a, a while, and then he starts ordering his men um, on various tasks, uh, barricading doors, um, sending other town guards to go out and start uh, forcing the uh, the townsfolk in towards the glassworks, as you had instructed um, to go into the basement in that area. Oh, by the way, I have been reading the, ch the chat, and uh, because of the, the way that everybody was complaining about having too much wealth at the beginning, I'm going to say, <laughs> no, you don't get a discount for bulk. Oh, no, no, no. I was talking about buying from him in bulk. That's, it's not oh, I see. issue. Yeah. Yeah, we're, and we're I, talking I was saying, um, so, so uh, my potions are costing like 30 gold pieces or something for me to brew. Uh, normally you can brew like a thousand gold it takes a day to brew a thousand gold pieces of a potion but technically you can only brew one potion a day is that how it stands? yes okay alright one potion a day no discounts okay uh, 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 I'll... how many of you are there? well there's just three of us on the ship but one of, the, one of us that's on the ship's not really here okay uh, I'll take four cure lights because I don't have a way to heal any of you. Um, so if anybody dies, or is about to die, um, I'm fast enough that I can just scurry my ass over there and shove a potion in your face. Um, just a so. heads up, read through the, the, the group loot first. Uh, we got plenty of potions in the... Nine cure serious, five cure moderate, and two cure light. Yes, but is, the question is, are you going to give that to the goblin that you just met? If uh... he's going to help us in a battle... Yeah. yeah. Because logically, even if he doesn't use it for himself, that's a potion that he could force feed us if we get into trouble. That's fair. Alright then, never mind. I'm not uh, buying <laughs> much from you yet. <laughs> I, I'm thinking about getting some heightened awareness ones, though, because those are actually super fucking handy. Uh, right. And remember, if you want another caster level higher than one, it's going to cost more. Yeah, no, I, I know. I'm taking it just at one for now, I think. Yeah, don't don't forget also that um, you can use your crafting skill to imbue a potion with someone else's magic. So you can no, not spell. with potions. Not with potions? Potions sure. is the only one that you have to have it yourself. Really? Yes. Really? That kind of sucks. Yeah, a little bit, doesn't it? Because some potions of uh, lesser restoration would be handy. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm thinking you're thinking of the rule where you can add, where normally you can add five to the DC in order to craft something you don't have the prereq for. Yeah, it's in the yeah. um, cooperative crafting section. It's not in the crafting section itself. Yeah, as long as long as someone someone is there to cast the spell that I need to make the potion, then I can make the potion. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That, that's kind of so, the rule for all crafting. As far as I know. Well. Yep. I have lesser restoration. Where was it? I know it was somewhere. Can we get a potion of liberating uh, man? No. Here it is. <laughs> you, 
Well, you could, but it wouldn't do any good. Because <laughs> despite the speed of a spell, drinking a potion is still a standard action. Yeah. There you go. Actually, ironically, if you could create a potion of liberating command, that would actually let it you let you use it yourself. Because usually the restriction is that you can't have two, a swift action and a reaction. So if you're using a standard action to drink a potion of liberating command to give you a swift, you could actually do that. That's interesting. <laughs> um. So yeah, basically, as soon as the... I don't want to hog up too much time with Rune. But basically, as soon as the mayor comes back with missive, he's going to fly off to Magmar and to the neighboring cities and deliver however many missives that she provides to draw reinforcements and equipment uh, with a special note for any settlements that have the materials, know-how, engineering, or readily available ballistae. Um, catapults and large siege weapons like heavy crossbows like arbalists uh, actual ballistae things like that to hold off uh, a flying dragon potentially All right. so it takes you another day um, of going to Magnamar and discussing things with uh, the Lord Mayor Grobulus who is at first a little non-receptive to the idea because he's having some personal troubles um, of a romantic um, flavor and he really doesn't want to hear your troubles at the moment and uh, eventually um, you get to the point where you're talking about um, the possibility of Sandpoint falling and the repercussions of that and he acquiesces and uh, he can send a regiment of soldiers there but the problem is the um, the logistics. Um, it's got boats. Use them. Yeah. So not only is it um, the boats, but it is the um, crouching weather, uh, the approaching weather. Uh, it is quite cold, and it is um, coming to what looks to be a terrible um, snowstorm. You felt it on your way, actually. It was probably one of the uh, most uncomfortable flights you've had in quite a while. Terrible turbulence. <laughs> Some poor farmer might have experienced the results of Rune getting sick along the way. <laughs> right. Um, the, the real world considerations for someone flying you know, non-stop throughout the entire day. Circus. You also don't have a windshield, so I mean, lots of bugs. Yeah. Yeah, Prune is not especially happy about having to do this, because he's very particular about his appearance. Like, he probably, when he finally, like, stopped to rest, he probably spent, like, a full hour just trying to brush out all the, the tangles and snarls and, you know, insects from his beard and, and long hair. Maybe uh, acquire a, a scroll or two of Endure Elements from Sandpoint before he left anywhere. So he can deal with the cold the cold shear. Alright. So, let's say a uh, about a week passes at this point. You are ha the, the rest of you are on the boat halfway towards um, Sandpoint. And uh, Varun, you've made it back to Sandpoint awaiting more troops from Magnamar. Um, you know that uh, you were successful in getting a few of the large ballista um, sent along with them. But it is going to take uh, a few more days. Um, after a, a day from that week, so a week and a day, uh, you receive word that um, one of the boats um, had sunk on its way to Sandpoint, um, carrying such said ballista. God damn it, we needed those equipments. But there are um, at least a dozen other um, troops from Magnamar on their way. Um, as far as Magnamarian uh, 
casters. Is there any contingent arriving from the Skullamance or Tower, whatever it's called in there? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Let me look it up. Mag Magnamar has a mage school. I, I just completely forget what the name of it's called. Uh, Stone of the Seers? Sounds or Twilight like Academy? Stone of the Seers, I believe. Uh, yes, Stone of the Seers. Seers is the wizard school. Yeah. They're mostly divination and abjuration, but uh, that's enough to help scry the terrains to get an idea of where this giant army might be in relation to the city, you know, how, know how much time we have. What their force yes. is of, that kind of stuff. Okay, so yeah, um, there were two in there. Um, an elderly man, uh, first off, and um, his apprentice uh, were on their way. Last you heard about. Okay. Um, I, I fully expect that that school has access to a, a simple teleport spell, if that helps transportation any. Absolutely. Uh, it is a percentage thing, though. So if they're not familiar with sand, it, it's a percentage thing, though. So if they're not familiar with Sandpoint, much, much lower percentage that they're actually going to get here. This Hell, is... they can even go in the wrong direction. Yeah, but you're you're forgetting the divination aspect of it. If they can scry the area, they can be as familiar as they want. Because they can actually visualize their landing spot. Oh yeah, that's true, I suppose. That's why it's a, it's a very powerful combo. Um, and, and hopefully along with those mages, you know, maybe some clerics of, uh, let's see, Magnamar, uh, Abadar, I think is their primary deity? Yep. That's Magnamar. Um, you know, maybe for the right price, or, you know, the proper donations, we can convince some Abadarian clerics to, to help out. Okay, yeah, you do. Um, and some of those actually are um, looking forward to meeting uh, Father Xantus, as they heard many fine things about him. Excellent. So, if there's anything else that Rune can do to assist with the preparations of the town, you know, lend his knowledge, or uh, his, his magics won't help much because they're all short duration stuff. But uh, if he can help with the construction of anything, or to direct, or you know, supervise, come up with strategies, right. that sort of thing. Well, first off, if you do have any magics um, regarding um, a terrible um, freeze over in that section of um, the that coast, uh, because the snowstorm that has encompassed the whole area. Uh, has now gotten to um, freezing rain and um, a extreme low temperatures, so much that while the rain starts hitting, uh, it actually freezes as soon as it um, hits the, the roofs and the ground. And uh, it's not so much snow as it is um, just making it very um, tough to get around in. Uh, aside from, you know, walking down the streets with a couple of flaming spheres trailing behind them, uh, not really. Unless, okay. uh, you know, there are magic crafters in Sandpoint for, like, level 1, level 2 stuff, so they might be able to come up and provide people with Endure Elements or, uh, similar effects. Okay. Rune in of himself is, is not an abjurist. He doesn't really manipulate the body too much. He's conjurer. So, while you're doing that, and uh, you're just basically trailing um, pathways of ice, um, people are following you, of course, and they're bringing more and more items. Um, just, they're grabbing desks and beds and everything they can to start making a barricade against each one of the gates. Um, focusing on the northern gate first. It 
some point or another, Rune will strongly recommend that the east and southeast gates be uh, rigged to collapse, if needs be. East and southeast. Yeah, the only two bridges into Sandpoint. How deep is the water? Uh, right around, I don't know, here ish. 10 feet. It's only 10 feet deep? Yep. Interesting. I thought it'd be much deeper than that. I mean, that's a shipping lane. Yeah. That's what the, um, the module says. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so, yeah, if that's only 10 feet deep, then some kind of thing needs to be built up there. You know, a wall of pikes or, or something. You got plenty of lumber. Just to stick a hedgerow of pikes up along the shoreline. If it's giants, though, how much will that actually do? Um, I'm not here. Never mind. I'm not there. No, no, no. Pikes. no. It's, <laughs> it's totally a valid question, but I'm picturing a pike the size of a small tree. It's not something even a giant wants to impale himself on. Owie! Yeah, but couldn't they just, like, uproot it? Couldn't they just pull it right out of the ground? Not if it, so... You might be thinking of something else. Pike row is like a porcupine wall. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm totally with you, but it's a giant. And like, if even if this thing is a tree, he just reaches over, grabs the top one, or two or three, and just tosses it. Yeah, while well, he's doing that, he's getting bombarded by archers standing behind it. That is true. Fair enough. I defer to your uh, greater knowledge of siege mechanics. He's a D&D &D player. What can you say? Um, <laughs> no, that's actually just history. <laughs> like that's not something like an actual like traditional battle. In uh, would be very similar to that, and like that's not something you just want to like walk into. Why not? It looks like fun. Look at all those guys, they're all in there. As you send the lumberers to clear this entire area, the It's actually not a bad idea. Generally speaking, you want uh, hundreds of feet of clear visibility in front of your walls. Yep. In this hill area. Yep. Yep, so, you know, the, the primary suggestions that Vroon has made, I don't know if this mechanically matters at all, but was uh, a long 20 to 25 foot wide, 10 to 20 feet deep trench in front of each wall with okay. pikes along the upper edge of that. So no one's going to be like leaping across that unless they want a belly full of stickers. Uh, pikes along the bridge and the water line down here. Since the water is only 10 feet deep, they could just wade through that no problem archers, as many archers and crossbowmen, because crossbows don't actually need a lot of training, by the way. You can hand someone a crossbow and they can use it. It's bows that take a lot of training. Uh, <laughs> line, you know, any volunteers or garrison men or farmers, you know, anyone, any militiamen who are around, give them all crossbows. Don't try to have anyone actually fighting in a, a giant in melee range. <laughs> Why don't I picture Vroon grabbing some, like, ten-year-old and be like, here, hold this. Like, hold no. this, point it at that. <laughs> no, 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 you nincompoop. You point it up like this, not at your foot. Ugh, you and then you get there. kids running around with crossbows trying to shoot each other. Somebody puts an eye out and it's all Rune's fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so like the main things I was mentioning was, you know, the, the trenches, pikes, Knock the, the get the bridges so they can be knocked out so people you know might fall if they're on it. Supplies underground in the tunnel system beneath the glassworks, which giants just simply can't fucking fit in. Um, sand and water. There's plenty of water around, so imagine they could put a cont large container of water on each f uh, roof or something. Lots of sand around the town. Help with fires up. And as far as personnel, I don't want to. I don't know what kind of P 
people we have to work with, but everyone should be assigned specific duties. It's like, hey, your job, put out fires. Your job, shoot things with that. Your job, be a runner for messages and have like double redundancy on everything. All right, so as, you, as you're continuing to do this, when you get back from Magnamar, um, you realize that Sheriff Hemlock has kind of um, just let you start delegating directly to the town guard as he's off doing whatever you have told him to do um, for the east and the west um, gates. Uh, you're At this moment, you're kind of taking care of the north gate. Um, you've gotten onto the top of um, one of the, the parapets here, and uh, you're looking out across uh, towards the northeast, and um, this is about uh, a week and four days at this point. And uh, you start to notice uh, a few moving rocks in the distance. Have the mages been successfully able to scry the approaching army? Um, no. As a matter of fact, when um, the dozen men with a broken ballista uh, arrive, the old man is uh, deathly sick, and his apprentice is uh, just focused and concentrating on keeping him uh, healthy. I see. Hopefully Father Xantus can be of assistance and make sure he's actually a usable asset in this battle. Shame for him to come all this way and be useless meat. Father Xantus does his best. Uh, yeah, so I see... Uh, what looks like boulders in the distance. Uh, Vroon will take it upon himself to make himself invisible, fly over there and figure out what the fuck is up. Okay. Um, as you elevate yourself into the air, uh, you look over towards the east and you see a familiar sight. Uh, it looks like the, um, the river has made the trip a little faster. And uh, you see your friends en route to Sandpoint Harbor. Woohoo! Are there any others around that might impede their progress? I'm a little hung up on the motion of boulders in the distance. Yeah, um, you're welcome to make a perception check. Can we at all make perception checks coming into this, or is it yes. more... Oh, okay. Yeah, you can all do that. Let me just drag your characters over here. I'm expecting most of the actions are going to be up on the top, so... I'm going to leave my guy up here. Uh, this token doesn't have anything on it. Oh, uh, let me get rid of that. And get your last one set to your sheet. Sorry, I don't mean to make your life hard. Bam! Oh, it's all good. What a hero. <laughs> Let's see, where's my perception? There it is. Now watch with that perception check. Morgan's all sorts of seasick and just looks, watch to the bottom of the boat or something. <laughs> <laughs> Are we in the boat or are we on our horses? You are in the boat at the moment. Alright, how about that one? That'll work. Okay. Thank you. Be back in like one second. Alright, so let's see. Perceptions. 29. Wow. Alright, you guys do see uh, quite a bit. Um, you see uh, several tops of trees swaying a little further than what the wind actually should make them sway towards in various spots around uh, the south and west of Sandpoint. And then uh, as you're coming up, you notice that some of the mountains, um, the tips, are alternating in their heights for some reason. Hmm. Well, that can't be good. Yeah. There's your problem. Your mountains won't sit still. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. And you see a flying wizard. No, they don't. Oh, no, he's we don't. He's invisible. Yeah, he's invisible. Oh, that's Come true. On. Never mind. Take that back. We see no flying. Well, I mean, technically, we could try and see a flying wizard. I don't know. With my thirty six. What's your stealth? <laughs> um, it doesn't help you for sight, man. <laughs> I mean, we might if you go through a cloud. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> it, is, it is raining, and you see, like, a ball of water flying overhead. <laughs> oh, I get the perfect image for this, too. Tarek just, just watches and stares and points. It's like, what's that? Prune, is that you? There you go. As much as I hated right. the rest of that movie, that was some awesome fucking scene. It was a great fight scene. What movie is that? Matrix. Matrix. Uh, that was uh, Revelations okay. or something. I haven't watched that movie yeah. in forever. The first one was I amazing. Was like I was so super excited about that movie because it had so much potential. And they squandered. Yeah, just a bit. But anyway. Um, Alright, so the, as far as the trees swaying and the mountains not behaving, uh, Froon's perception probably wasn't enough to actually notice most of that, right? Correct. Okay. So he, he sees the his party members and he flies down there and uh, dismisses his invisibility. It's only minutes per anyway. So the, the party boat just all of a sudden sees a very stern-looking Vroon standing there with his arms crossed on the prow. I saw you coming, man. I saw you. <laughs> How you doing? You're not as sneaky as you think you are. <laughs> Vroon, what's the word? The word Bird. is desperation. The mm. town is preparing, though I do not guess that chances of survival to be particularly high. I well, fully expect that our own contributions will make or break this encounter. Well, it's funny you mention that, because there's lots of trees moving really weird right over there, and did you see those mountains coming in? What? I did not say something earlier. Well, you just got here. I was hoping for some good news. <sighs> Where are we on the in the, in the map? Relation. You're towards the south, next to the docks at the moment. Okay, oh, so, so we we've actually gotten there. Okay. Yes, okay, cool. you're there. Okay. This is this is us. This is our boat now. <laughs> our boat now. All right. So we'll dock the boat, tie it down. The neighboring cities and settlements have been alerted to the need, and they are sending what re what reinforcements they may. I've suggested when should they arrive? Um, would they have arrived by now, or are they still all... They did. They, You only got um, 12 out of the 36 men. Wow. That were sent. Of all wow. the settlements around, they only sent 12? They no, said 36. They sent... Well, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Realizing yeah. up on everyone's fear. <laughs> Alright, well, in any case, the settlements have been alerted, they've sent reinforcements, plans are underway to defend the city, and Froon will uh, direct them to Sheriff Hemlock to go over the specifics while he wants to immediately go and check out those swaying trees because the biggest piece of knowledge one can know is where is your enemy. Maybe you should give it to the goblin. It, you know, invisibility. Oh, it's only because your stealth minutes. was two. I, I understand that. That's <laughs> technically not how it works. But um, if you think you can get over there and scout what's going on in under 11 minutes and get out of there, feel free. Well, I, don't, I don't know. How... Uh... How far away is the 
it, it, or the the you know trees that are swaying oddly. Um, they're up towards the northwest, and they are northeast. I'm sorry, northeast. Yes, <laughs> they're out to sea. <laughs> That's why they look so odd. <laughs> Burnham Wood is marching across the water. So are they like in that forested area right by the Long Coast Road? Correct. Oh hell yeah, dude! Are you kidding? Oh yeah, I thought they were like way off. Okay. Oh yeah, no, tarek has got I this shit in the bag, man. He'll be back in five. Yeah, so take a, a standard invisibility. And that will okay. last you eleven minutes. All right. Tarek is going to run for um two hundred and forty feet per round. Swimming straight line, but yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, but I can make it straight lines because, I mean... He's a I, monk. Yes. <laughs> exactly. What, there's a tree in the way? I'll go up the tree. <laughs> but yeah, he'll, he'll go like 240 feet around for... How many rounds can you run for straight? I don't think it's ever, ever come up. Uh, well, while well, they figure that out. Morgan will have Rune take her to the the authorities. Because I don't think Morgan's ever been here. Okay. Mike, is the movement we've seen and everything, does this sent, uh, have a sense of impending attack, like, this day? Or is it far enough away that, like, things are still approaching and... It seems impending today, this okay. next few minutes. Okay, so I can actually run for 14 minutes without rest. So we'll take up to six minutes to go figure out what's going on with those trees and then five minutes to get back. Okay. Tarek, are you going through the North Gate to do this? Um, I'm going to retroactively point out that yes, one of our companions is a strange little goblin. Do not shoot him. <laughs> well, he's in gnome form right oh, now. Oh, yeah, right? no, no. He's a gnome. He's, he's disguised as a gnome. Okay, Just gnome in case? Now. Yes. He's a gnome Please. who is cursed to sometimes appear like a goblin. Don't shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, the hat of disguise doesn't stop working just because you get shot either, so. That furrows uh, Hemlock's brow. And he's invisible right now, so... We've seen That's some two. things, man. Don't question <laughs> it. <laughs> People would be glad to buy some of those potions, by the way. Alright, just let me know what they're buying. Uh, cure potions. Uh, cure like right. wounds potions. Um, right. You'll get a run on those, so if you have uh, up to ten of those, you can you can consider those sold. I imagine awesome. potions of resist energy fire would be a very hot item to sell. I I can't do that. <laughs> wow. You don't, you don't have any resist energy? Really? No. Worst alchemist ever. Oh, I just okay. I just naturally have resistance to energy stuff. I don't need spells to do that. Oh man. You do? Yeah. How the hell do you have that? Because <laughs> I'm super cool. Pretty much. <laughs> the so terrible. Yes. The um, the front gate has mm -hmm. been barricaded so well that they cannot open the doors. Okay. So they are glad to uh, to let you down on a rope sure. uh, on the other side. Okay. And uh, as soon as you're dropped down, you can see um, quite a far distance in spite of the, uh, the rain. And uh, you start bolting up the road uh, to the northeast. And as you're going full speed, you actually see a massive boulder fly over your head and you could feel the wind brush past your hair and then you hear a, a sharp crack against the massive um, gate it's an uh, iron reinforced oak timbers just splinter and crack as this massive stone hits it and that's when you see four massive stone figures 200 feet away from the gate. Okay. Which I could theoretically reach in around. Uh, four of them, you said? 
Yes. Hmm. Okay, can I see anything else nearby here? Like, any more trees moving or anything? Uh, no. No more trees. But... That, that sounded like there was a butt in there. But I'm uh, moving you over to a map so you can see exactly what's Oh, going. yeah, for sure. Aha! I see. Those are big giants. This map looks really familiar. I I feel like at one point or another we someone killed a dog here. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, let me. So I'm still eleven minutes of invisibility. Yes. Eleven minutes from when I cast it. Yeah. Right. So it would have been like just a minute ago because I just hit the ground, didn't I? Imagine it didn't take you ten rounds to get down there, but sure. Yeah. That's fair. Ah, uh, okay. Actually, you know what? I'll use this one instead. Uh, okay, first things first. He's going to um, use a standard action to turn on bark skin. Uh, and then he's going to go and try and scramble back up that rope. Because, I mean, he doesn't really need to scout when you can fucking see them. Yeah, they, um, as you were coming out, they were coming um, out of the, the trees. Um, it looks like they were um, starting to yell at the gate. And they're just taunting and jeering the, the puny humans. And they're kind of using pigeon common um, they can't speak common very well, so they're getting many of the words incorrect. That's spectacular. That's hysterical. Alright, uh, what will the others be doing? I know Morgan is going to the, um, to the garrison. Nergrim is going to head to the northern gate. sight of the moving trees and uh, the sense of a pending attack as you mentioned you know, like this day would we have time to have prepared before uh, these boulders started slamming into the gates uh, it depends what would you have prepared uh, basic self buffs such as uh, mirror images seen as mage a armor mage armor well mage armor you know, I wake up with that shit yeah. oh yeah so, but a, I don't a max of two buffs two buffs okay okay Yep. All right. Uh, then before he dropped down, I imagine it would have been smart if. Uh, if you were going to scouting, I would have offered to provide blur for you. Well, that's okay. He, he would have handed you a kind of a stick that looked like it had been carved with some very crude uh, marks that looked like goblins kind of poking at uh, wolves or dogs or something with big giant sticks, <laughs> and said, "Hit me with this." And that's mage armor, baby. A wand of, a wand of dog sodomy. What? <laughs> I. So, so he wants you to hit him with a mark. Roll, roll to attack with a club. Well, so, yeah, it actually, it'd be a wooden stake, right? Yeah, there you go. Uh, if so on my way. Stake. So yes, Tark if, gets an hour of mage armor. Beautiful. If on my way to the. Uh, Barracks. If I would have heard the attack starting, I would have headed that direction. All right. Yeah. You. Uh, you have. You have a couple rounds after the first um, strike of the um, the iron gate here. So we'll move you up to about there. And Tarek, you're going back to the uh, the gate, right? Um. Actually, if I. If that was with the uh, belief that I had had zero chance to actually do any buffs before scouting. So, with that in mind, let's wreak some havoc here. Okay. I'm invisible, so... Oh, that's, I don't even need to charge. This is wonderful. 
We're just gonna cruise right on in. Okay. Wow. Okay. I'll just sit here, guys. Have some fun. Well, Ted, I you'll will. get a surprise round. Beautiful. Actually, I was like 60 feet back over here, wasn't I? Yeah. I would like to be there instead. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot up there for my surprise round. And then when actual rounds start, I will do another thing. All right, Morgan, you will get a surprise round as well. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'd have to climb the rope, right? To get up there? Yeah. So I move 30, and then the rest of my movement to get up top. All right. Nurgrim, you said you were just selling potions, and then you just got up onto the to the top? Yeah, yeah. If I, if I get an action, I'm going to uh, cast False Life on myself. Okay. Yeah, you can cast False Light. Alright, so the round begins. Uh, Rune, you have already done your buffs, so this is the real round. Uh, Rune is first. Okay, let me uh, pull up the appropriate combat music. Okay, now we see what a mage can do as a siege engine. Hmm. Um, if you could be so kind as to pull out a big old stinking cloud template for me, please. Alright. Don't worry about getting me in the uh, blast radius. Oh, it's a stinking cloud. You don't want to take that risk, man. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were fireballing. Uh, I, I tend to stay away from. I'm not a blaster. Gotcha. There's a few spells like that, but not many. That's a sweet oh. ass stinking cloud right there. Damn. I'm the one with the noses. <laughs> <laughs> you want the one with the noses? We can give you. It that. is stinking cloud. Can you put that, um, or can you move me to front so that I can target myself through that? Perfect, thank you. You got it. And, and Turek is definitely already up there by the time I'm casting this, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, can you see him, though? He's pretty fucking stealthy, I'm not gonna lie. And you if, are he's, if he's invisible, like straight up, I cannot see him. And I sure as hell can't hear him from this far away. So there's no possible way... Oh! Duh! God damn it, I've seen invisibility. Message? No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, fair enough. I always forget about that shit. Um, yes, I can see him just fine. Alright, cool. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's get some fort saves. Uh, let's see, this guy. He misses it. That guy makes it. And that guy makes it. Yeah, I'm I sure like they... the epic waves coming up on the, on the right. <laughs> yeah, I fully expect this to not have like the most efficacious like, nauseating thing. This is more like just block vision, so they can't throw shit. Alright, Neergrim. Nirgrim has a very important question for anyone who has any idea how an alchemist works. Okay. Can I affect a bomb with multiple of my um, no. discoveries? No. Okay. So most I can't... of them have a yeah. Most of them have an asterisk attached to it. Um, so like you can't frost acid fire bomb someone. Can uh, Can I tanglefoot confuse bomb someone? I don't think so. Let me go take a look real quick. Confused Bomb does, does have an asterisk beside of it. Then you wouldn't be able to do that with something else. That's a solo thing. Who deleted my pink thing? <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was <laughs> supposed to be there. It's okay. My bad. It's okay. <laughs> it was my pink thing. Why would you do that? In that area. I'm a throw... Ooh. Thanks for that. All right. Nice. That does damage. You can throw that far. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't say it doesn't. And the AC of an 
the AC of an empty square is seven. So is it five, something like that. So including all the penalties, I think a twenty uh, nineteen will hit it. Guess. Oh yeah, you're right. It doesn't say that it doesn't do damage. Damn, that's what when, is the like, range increment of a bomb. Uh, Ten, I think. Uh, let me let me go double check. Twenty twenty feet. So for every twenty feet, I take a minus two to hit an empty nice. square. Yep. So I take a cumulative minus three. No, 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 oh, minus sorry. two. It's minus, minus six. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, right. even with that, you still hit an AC five. That's a fucking yeah. joke. So 13 to hit the touch AC of that empty square. Okay. So you hit the empty square. And we just need to uh, find out the reflex saves of each one of those. 21 and an 8 alright <laughs> alright so one takes 5 the other one takes 10 and it is entangled alright and uh that's it Alright, so this guy is nauseated. Giant vomit! Hey! <laughs> Sorry, Chuck. That's okay, it's the one across the way. We're good. You're fine. Alright, this guy is um, yelling something in giant and uh, it's coming down here when did he save rune <laughs> uh, Tarek you will get an attack of opportunity if you want um I'm good for right now okay um, he used double movement to get there so he will forego his attack and that brings us back to Tarek uh, okay, so let's see. Tarek's gonna do some stuff. Um, there's three of them, and I believe I have five of these. Okay. Also, that's ridiculous. You're insane. Um, He's a sage, okay? That's what he does, is he knows things. Fair enough. So is this guy nauseated? No, this one. guy is tangled. He's okay. Got it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for um, blind. Uh, yeah, so first two are blinds. First one's on this guy. Second one's on this guy. And then the third, fourth, and fifth are gonna go clockwise around with entangles. Okay. Just to make that really fucking confusing. Or you can just roll them up and decide which one is which. I. It's usually more uh, appropriate if oh. I say them first, because otherwise, no. beautiful. That's otherwise, it. I'm just that making guy's shit definitely up. Blind. <laughs> All right. So the first attack misses his CMD. Okay. The second attack absolutely gets it. Okay. The uh, third attack just makes it. Fourth attack definitely hits, and the fifth attack misses. Okay. This poor guy is blind yeah. and entangled. All right. So the dude that's already entangled gets a pin. Ha! Ah, yes. The blind is for four rounds. And the, uh, yeah, thank you. So, um, just a question with that. So, because it's a dirty trick, even though it lasts four rounds, it's still just the full action you're rid of it, right? Yes, but when I okay. stack them up, it continues more rounds. So, um, this guy was actually the blind one, sorry. And then this guy's pinned. Four. 
two rounds. Plus five by which the thing... Yeah, you, you understand. Okay. Uh, and then I think I missed this other dude over here with fucking everything, so... Well, this one's also entangled. Yes. And then I'm going to... You would put that big giant cloud right there, wouldn't you? Uh, five foot step here, I suppose. Suffice okay. to say, this guy is out of the fight for a good long while, so don't worry about <laughs> it. Alright, so entangled. Um, he is still in this cloud. I think that's the one that's pinned, too. Yeah. Okay, so ending your turn on there, you gotta save it, I guess. Oh, I need to do this. Uh, so the entangle on this guy is for three rounds. You're gonna make Mark write you a really fancy Marco. <laughs> I don't even know I if mean, I want to go near that one. If I had <laughs> one that had drop downs for if, what each thing did, that'd be cool, but I'm not gonna... If, if I, I could... were to write that, I'd probably just be writing a single one and hitting it five times for however many attacks I get. I would not try to combine that all in one shot. I mean, it's just a bunch of 1d4s in a row, really. The rest of it's so that nobody forgets. Yeah, no, I mean your initial flurry of tricks. Oh, yes, that's... I, I would that's just be hitting it five, five times. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I'm looking up the uh, the escape artist for this guy. You wanna just make a strength check to get out? Yeah, he doesn't have escape artists, so you don't have to. <laughs> I was gonna say he's a giant, I'm sure a strength check is a hell of a lot better than escape artist. Uh what is my CMD? It's pretty up there. Forty one is what he's gotta be. Well, what's he got to be for the Tangled Foot? Because isn't it gooey? Oh, so, um... No, no, I pinned him. So, oh. this, this is where I was kind of getting at confused. You entangle him by a dirty trick. Right. Right. So the dirty trick removal is a full round action. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're escaping the grapple. Right? No, he got entangled. This guy here... He's entangled because of the bomb. I understand that. The bomb. And then got pinned because well, of Oh, the you're bomb. right. Pinned by a dirty trick. So he's double entangled, basically. I guess not actually so, pinned. Full round to get rid of the pen, and then whatever to get rid of the tangle bit. No, no, no. I'm I'm rereading Dirty Trick Master. He's he's basically just double entangled. I would have to hit him with a entangled. Really doesn't stack, does it? No. You're entangled or you're not. Right, but, but if you yes. double entangle somebody with dirty tricks. By a dirty trick master, then it does stack to become pinned. So, because he was tangled with bag entangled, it doesn't actually stack. Combat maneuvers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Alright, so he's maneuver. going to try a combat maneuver to get out of um, the pinned condition. And he does not do it. He goes a 35. So that is his standard action. But he can't move either because he's glued to the. Oh no, wait, he's not because he was in splash. Never mind. Alright, um, that was his turn. So, Morgan. Does he have to make a save because he's in the cloud? Yep. Yes, he does. Uh, that's a 42. Yep. 32, yes, he makes it. <laughs> uh, Morgan's next. Okay. Uh, so far away, but I don't want to get down there with them. Um, you got a bow, you're fine. I know! <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't bother smiting these guys either. These are just piddly no. little minions. 
No, 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 no. I know. I've got lots of stuff saved up for the big guys that are about to come down around the corner. Alright, targeting this right here. Okay. Act no. Go around. Uh, Morgan, I'm gonna throw this out right now. You are going to be our Dragon Slayer. Just saying. Oh? <laughs> if it's chromatic, yeah. You smite that thing. You get that 20 or, um, points of damage on it. What's the non-chromatic? God damn it. Uh, metallic. Metallic. Oh yeah, no, then if it is chromatic, you're for sure a fucking Dragon Slayer. Yeah. Alright, your first arrow hits, your second hits, your third misses, and your rapid shot hits. Do you also uh, have deadly aim? Uh, yeah. Oh no, that's the merciful. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So this guy's blind, right? Yes. He's still going to swing at you, regardless. Well, that's just rude. My AC is thirty-five. All right. Plus he's blind. Plus he's blind. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no! Oh no! Roll he the might hit me. <laughs> Where the hell is there it is? Wait, what's your AC? He misses. Thirty-five. Okay, so he can hit you on a nineteen. You lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, he gets two attacks. What's up? He gets two attacks. Yeah, that's um, like this is actually that was his second attack. I'm going to roll for the critical. Um, it misses confirm. anyway. You don't have to confirm. It misses. It's a blind conceal chance. Oh, okay. Like, Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that brings us back to Brune. Uh, Vroon will cast Stone Skin. <laughs> Give me Morgan, nice. Vroon, and Nergrim Stony Skin. Wow. For 110 hit points and um, like 110 minutes or something, so it's not going off anytime soon. In order wow. to cast this, uh, he is taking 3 points of strength damage, which he hopes Morgan will be able to restore between combats. Why do you take strength damage? Blood money. Ah, to cool. fuel the component costs, I take strength damage. Alright. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Let's move in action. Neargrim. Alright, um, Neargrim. You can interrupt for just a moment, please. Uh, we do no. have uh, Alcathor. Thank you very much for following our bullshit. We appreciate it. <laughs> Hi. What's up, Alcathor? Yeah, yeah, Alcathor. Thanks, friend. Alright, near Graham. Doesn't know what he's gonna do. <laughs> near Graham's gonna throw a bomb. He does have that fancy bow. At this guy. Okay. The bomb hits, and it explodes on him in a fiery blast. How big is the splash radius? Uh, it's Five one square feet. away, and I, yeah, oh. it, I'm, I'm making sure to target them so they don't hit you. That's fine. Okay. Anything else? Nope. If it helps, I can pass your reflex save on a 2, so if you need to, you can hit me. How long is this um, nauseated? nauseated? Until he gets his ass out of the cloud. And then 1d4 plus 1 after. Yeah, he can move out of the cloud. 
And then he's nauseated for 1d4 plus 1. And he's nauseated for 5 rounds nice. afterwards. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, that poor guy. So the same. Don't worry about that guy in the cloud. He's not doing anything. Other than giving us a scientific study of the digestive systems of stone giants. <laughs> is that a... Is that a license plate? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Funny. They're much like goats and they use stones in their stomach to help digest things. Interesting. Alright. This stone giant, can see, is not or anything, and we'll get flank. <laughs> will he get flanking, though? I don't think he'll get flanked because the other guy's blind. It doesn't matter. If the guy can threaten, uh, technically threaten the squares, he gets flanking. So if, if, if he is eligible to take an attack of opportunity, he's eligible to provide flanking. He can't take an attack of opportunity, though. He's blind. Why not? That's a GM flavor call. I just... If I was invisible, he wouldn't be able to take an attack of opportunity, right? Uh, it's no different if he's blind. So, invisibility, you know, technically he would be able to roll a perception to detect you if he's adjacent to you. So technically he could. The chances of that happening are so slim that the vast majority of GMs just roll if you're invisible, you're fine. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. So I it's technically a GM call, but... However, Mikey wants to roll with it. We've usually made blind non-combative. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. I, in the past, I have said no attacks of opportunity while blind, so I'll continue that. Woo! Now, of course, you'll crit now and completely make the point academic. Oh, yeah. But it's good to know, because I blind people a lot. He's gonna miss. Alright. Tarek. Alright. Tarek is actually going to five foot into this guy's square because he's two sizes smaller than him and can share space. And then. Is. Actually. I didn't take that feat. Never mind. Um. You know what? We're gonna be rude. So, first one is blinding. All four of the other ones are sickening with the intent to nauseate this poor guy. Considering you're uh, standing between his legs, I can only imagine where you're punching him to make him nauseate. Oh him. yeah! No, Tarek bounces from one leg to the other until he gets high enough to just pummel the bejesus out of this guy's stone nards. Alright. You have, uh. You've made some little shards of rock fall <laughs> down upon you. <laughs> so he should be blind and nauseated if two of those uh, last four hit. They, uh. All of them hit. Is CMD? Really? Oh, I'm thinking armor class, no. The CMD. <laughs> You need a 30. So. Two do hit? Third and the fourth miss. Okay. That's okay. That means he is nauseated and blind. So blind is for two rounds, and nauseated is for one. Poor guy. <laughs> He's having a bad day. <laughs> All right, this stone giant is desperately trying to get out of the pin. And he fails. Morgan. Fort save? Fort save. Fort save fails. Ah, ooh, he's he's pinned and nauseated. That's going to be <laughs> He's lying in a pool of his own vomit while he's pinned, basically. 
Alright, let's finish this guy off. Like, this combat alone might be enough to discourage an army from attacking. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, targeting this square here. Uh, lethal damage. Okay. The arrows fly one by one into its chest. Oh, he collapses to the side like a big tree being felled. <laughs> Timber! And you can feel a small tremor on the ground as he falls. The stone giant tries to move, can't see, and he yells out for those of you who can speak giant. Mock Murian! He will not be pleased! Prune He's going to try shout, to get out. Prune will shout back, Mark Murian will never know. He is still stuck. <laughs> Broom. Uh, actually, he's no longer entangled because that one lasted only one round. I think. Yes. Alright, he is still blind, though, correct? Yes, he's definitely still blind. Let's see. He can, he can take a round to get rid of that, right? Yeah, but it takes a full round action. Alright, so, yeah, he'll he'll be working on that, um, since he already tried to get free, he can't use a full round action for that, so, Vroon. Uh, the, gu the blind guy way in the back here, uh, Vroon is gonna raise a, a sickly green colored stick of, uh, wood with arcane sigils on it, and, uh, small darts of acid will arc across the battlefield. Probably missing. He's blind. And he's far away. Yeah. Is that just um, a normal range? Static? It's a it's a ray. Let me double check the range on this. I could be totally flubbing this. It's like twenty five plus. I didn't think about it. oh long range four hundred plus forty. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, that hits his touch. Okay, so that is going to do two d four damage for two rounds. Finally. Yes, two rounds. Uh, this round and the next round. You can tell he's just happy to be hit by something other than a, a disabling <laughs> strike. <laughs> as, as acid sizzles into his shoulder. As he roars and Feels like he can get into combat now. Nergrim, it's your turn. <laughs> uh, Nergrim is, uh. Save your magic, friend. There are more coming. Nergrim's just gonna shoot his bow. This fancy new bow. Oh, by the way, I need uh, Vroon and Nergrim and Morrigan to make perception rolls, please. Wow, I'm offended that I was left out. Yeah, well, you because have no idea what's going on. That's because you're tiny and in a forest of legs. That's true. Your view to the sky is somewhat obscured. <laughs> <laughs> well, not right now. I mean, we did just take this guy out. Uh, that's true. That's true. I'm sure Tarek is uh, posing. On his corpse, very Tark heroically. Tark up and says, I didn't know there were elephants here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, um, Nergrim and Morrigan, you notice that the, uh, the tops of the trees are starting to move down towards the mill pond over near the tanners, um, let's see, 
I'm gonna switch maps real quick so you guys get a quick shot of this. By the what? So, right over here. You see some movement in the trees, and um, you can tell that something is happening that way. Question, do we split the party? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that always the question? I mean, I've got this pretty well handled. You can disable them. <laughs> I mean, I can still hit them, and they can almost not hit me at all. Prune, at the very least, would probably fly over there because you can get there pretty quickly. Okay. On your next round, you can fly over there. Um, you actually hear um, another boulder slamming into uh, the gate down that way. Have we heard anything from the town? Like, it does it sound like they're... Yeah, um, as a matter of fact, they are reacting. You can hear the bells on the cathedral starting to ring. Can we trust the town to take care of themselves for a moment? Um, the meantime, in the meantime, um, as you say that, the guards that are around you are firing arrows. I was gonna say, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> They're just hanging out. No big deal. Right. I got my, I got my macro. The best part is, it. well, the best part of this whole thing is that boulder is like the size of that dude, right? And that's a normal human guy. And that <laughs> boulder is maybe the size of this stone giant's torso, but the goblin is half the size of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's just running circles around these guys. Okay, that is that is really not right. Uh, both of those attacks should be at an additional plus thirteen. And you rolled a zero. You one d zero. Did you not select ranged as the attack method? I did. Grayed out box shows what? One. Try refreshing your I did. page. I hit the recap button. I mean, if you know what it is, I mean, you can always just roll manually for now, too. Yeah. So, both of those attacks should be at an extra plus 13. And the damage was a 1d0 as well. Yeah, uh, both the damages should be an additional 1d8. Alright, go ahead and roll up. Those both do hit. And you're hitting the guy in the back, or...? The I'm hitting the back? nauseated guy. Okay. The extra damage. Not bad. So, 15h. Alright. Yeah, you sink some uh, some cold arrows into that thing, and uh, he is still nauseated. This guy goes off of the initiative order, and Tarek, you're up. Okay, Tarek, seeing this guy is still blind, is going to five foot over here, and then probably punch this guy a whole lot. Which both hit. Alright. Oh, you don't want to jiggle his nuts too? Nah, not this time. We'll get him next round. Yeah, right. you you basically just put a few dents into his rock shins. And uh, he's going to swing blindly at you in response. On his turn, of course. Uh, it is the... Um, the stone giant up here that's nauseated. He's going to run down here, run through his buddy, and uh, go down here. No, he can't. 
Well, hasn't it been two rounds since he was... It's, it's definitely been two rounds, so he can definitely do that now. Okay. And then... He needs a 1d4 plus one. Yep, I'm on it. He continues to be nauseated for another four rounds. Incurring an attack from Tark. Oh yeah, he does actually. Hold on, let me punch him. Come here, bitch. Oh, maybe not. That was a two. Uh, Frankie? What's a forced first? <laughs> it's it's a special type of uh, weapon damage. <laughs> it's it's a it's an alchemist thing. You wouldn't know much about it. Okay. You do that to someone else, they get you back. That's what happens. The same armor as the Kamaza Longbow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's just one guy building all these weapons. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Oregon. Right. We're gonna get the lonely guy over here. Trying to square here. Yeah, he's killed over. Just vomiting. <laughs> yeah, poor guy. What did he ever do to you? <laughs> he was just ordered to throw stones at the gate, and all of a sudden, all this shit started <laughs> happening. <laughs> Alright, so, uh. Damn. Attacks second, second attack and attack. third miss, but the first and the last do. We use that those are the good damage ones. Right. Alright, he is filled with various arrows. And uh, he's just looking around. So are the guards just being star, star troopers and just Yeah, like, they're just they're just firing into these stone giants. <laughs> David Frune, you're supposed to teach him how to aim. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't have much to work with, though, did I? You're the archer. Frune is, uh, you, it's up to you. I can send you to a different map if you'd like, if you're going down towards the, the tannery. So, Nergrim Morgan, there's another attack to the south. One of you should come with me. Who will it be? Oh, oh, heck, let's see. Rune touches Nurgrim on the shoulder and they instantly uh, teleport by a dimension door to the uh, crenellations of the tower over the gate to the south. Okay. Well. Split Morgan the party. Will shout out. Oh, Tarek, it's just you and me! Tarek shouts back, Oh, we got him! <laughs> Oh, by the way, um, it wasn't a gate that you heard. It was a building that you heard okay. that was oh. smashed into. Uh, what and the uh, closest stone building with a tall roof is then? I want some kind of elevation. Dimension door never fails, so wherever. Personally, I think it's a little OP. Like, teleport, yes. You could end up in the wall somewhere. Dimension door? No problem. It's a lower level spell, too. I swear to God, if you put me in a wall. <laughs> hey, at least he's not Gellius. Especially because he's. <laughs> you've uh, forced him to no longer be the uh, Earth kineticist either, so he couldn't just walk out of the wall and be like, well, that was weird. <laughs> Oh, that's the thing. He never could be in the wall. He could burrow yeah, yeah, through I, it. Yeah, burrowing just creates an extra dimensional, extra dimensional space. Yeah, so he's never in the wall. Oh yeah, that's true. Okay, so... Um, let's let's put ourselves down here. Is that okay with you, Nergum? Or yeah. Or find where we were? You can put me wherever you want to put me. I, I oh like baby! The, I like the idea of being able to duck out of sight behind the top of this place. I don't. Are you okay with ranges? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. My bombs hit touch, and my arrows don't worry about the range. Okay. 
I don't know whose turn it is. We can't see the turn it is, anymore. Yeah, I'll let you know. Um, the Stone Giant. Turn. Stone Giant still nauseated. Uh, it's Tarek. Alright, Tarek's going to go back to punching a lot, probably, because this guy's still blind, right? Yep. Okay. I think for another round or two. Cool, cool. Get wrecked, nerd. Versus AC. Uh, yeah. The second one misses. I kind of figured. My lows are really, or my rolls are really low right now. Minimum damage too. That blows. Right. Also, I forgot to turn on Piranha Strike. I'm an idiot. All right then. It's okay. That's that's on purpose. I promise. All right. Uh, this one is still nauseated. Morgan. All right. Kill this guy with arrows again. All right, the uh, the second and the last do hit. What was Nerdrum doing while he was flying? Anything? So we're dimension dooring over, so it was the same same round. Uh, it would be the next round. Um, he would probably be. Would that work? D Dimension Door takes that. up my move and my standard. He yeah, so normal. yeah, so I still just get my turn as normal. Okay. Um, so we can resolve Morgan's attack, and then it'll be Nerg Nergrim's turn. Okay. Sorry, and Mike. Uh, the, the split screen is gonna make life hell for you keeping track of order. <laughs> oh yeah, it's obvious. So we have twenty plus thirteen, thirty-eight. See, that's why I like my fancy turn order macro. It tells you whose turn it is in the chat. And it quick, quick, quick. Probably once you're on separate screens. Does it? Yeah. I'm gonna have to look into that. While you guys right. are doing that, I'm gonna jump up real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. All right, back to uh, Nerdrum and the room. Where are you guys? I don't see you. Down a little south. Oh, okay, cool. Bruton's on the the league the league um, side of the roof. Yep. Nergum's just gonna rain confusion bombs. Try to okay. get them confused and hitting each other. To the, uh, to the one closest. to the, uh, yeah. And that's at a minus, let's say a 65 feet. So 40 is a minus 2, 60 is a minus 4, past 60 is a minus 6. So that's 19 versus touch. Yep, that still hits. Okay. Right. 16 fire damage, and he needs a will save to avoid confusion. Nice. Uh, with a 25, let's see. Yeah. Makes that. Yeah. Okay. And. Let's get these guys in here, too. I'm just saying, I really, really love the, the power cards packers. Yeah, they're nice. Blind guy. He's pretty spry for a blind guy. <laughs> he is gonna have to try to hit. And he's gonna miss. Round five. He's only nauseated for one more turn. Is Tarek back yet? I think that's him right there. I 
have returned. All right. All right, welcome back, just in time. Oh, good. I was hoping I'd be back in time. Did I get hit by anything? Uh, no, just uh, whizzes. Right over top oh, cool. of your head. All you, right. You I'm missed scared. my pretty spry for a blind guy joke. Oh. Fortunately, you I'm... Just, it was just whizzes, but you, know, you did scare him enough for him to you know, speak a little. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm I'm not sorry that I missed your terrible joke. Um, I mean this guy is still blind, so fuck him. Let's punch them a lot. Uh, focusing on the same dude. All right. There we go. That's much better. Oh yeah. That's six though. The second attack does miss, but um, you can tell that he's kind of limping now. Doing All right. Quite, quite a job on him. Uh, this guy is still nauseated. And it is Morgan's turn. And I do have Rune and Nurgrim on the, uh, the initiative order. Uh oh. Uh oh. What is okay. this? I need a uh splash. I need a splash. Please let it be these. Shoot. That's back no! towards the town. God damn it. Nope, it misses. Alright. Broom. I really did attack that ground though. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta get you to see a counselor or something. <laughs> Maybe right. when we get back to Magmar. Uh, these giants, what are they wielding? Uh, they are wielding great clubs. And the stones that they were throwing are what, on a pouch or just from the ground? <sighs> they have um, nets that are being pulled by um, rope. Okay. <laughs> How great are their clubs? Pretty great. All right, so we're gonna hopefully make them drop this. All right, peace bond. That trick. So we need some will saves up here. It's, um, it will fit eleven weapons within thirty feet. You're just focusing in on the middle. I hit all of them. 9 miss, 24 uh, makes it, and 18 makes, misses. This rune just makes like the, the somatic gesture of slapping someone's hand from trying to pick something up. It's like, nope! No! That'll hurt that. That's for Friday. I feel like I'll be making that gesture in about a year. Constantly. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Nergrim's up. All right, Nergrim is uh, going to try to confuse the closest one again. Okay. I'll go for the middle one who still has its weapons. Oh yeah. I'll go for the one who didn't drop his weapon. Okay. Uh, that is a definite hit. You score twenty-three fire damage as he bursts into flames, and will save is 12, which he is now confused. For 11 rounds, that's fucking mean. <laughs> yeah. The plan is to get all of them confused with each other and then get one to hit the other one. <laughs> I just and have then... them duke it out for 11 rounds. Oh well, yeah, fair, that's the end are, of that. To be fair, these are stone giants. They're not exactly known for their intelligence. If one of their buddies whacks them, they might just want to whack them back anyway. That's true. And it's very sad to see someone else confused for once. Yeah, guys. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, this stone giant, seeing the, uh, the people on the roof casting, is going to start making his way down. Is that going to throw rocks at him? Yeah, he is, but he's still making his way down. Oh. Is he making his way downtown? God damn it, he <laughs> beat me. <laughs> You're gonna need to make some strength checks before you can do that, Mike. <laughs> the uh, 
throwing stuff. You need a strength DC 21 in order to pull out any weapon or rock or anything. Alright. I'm sure they'll make it, but you never know. Well, it's just raw strength, too, so you never know. That's true. <clears throat> That's the beauty of this peace bomb spell. Like it, it continues to have an effect after after its initial. So he tries to pull a rock out of the net, and like it's just stuck there. It just will not come out. All right. So uh, he is baffled at that. That's his standard action right there. Yep. Yeah, that's, and moving on to the next one, um, he is confused. But he acts normally. And uh, he steps this way. And he will throw a rock. Uh, this one's going to be at Rune. Are you invisible? I am not invisible, but I am uh, halfway below the peak of the house here. Alright, so you will get uh, two to your armor class. Okay, so 24. Alright, both will miss. One of the rocks crashes into the side of the building, the other arcs overhead to land in the street behind. Alright. He actually could have only thrown one, now that I think about it, because he moved. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this guy is moving down here as well, and he will try to pick up one of his boulders. And not succeed. It's a heavy fucking boulder, man. Damn. <laughs> I I have a question. Does the spell require you to make the strength check as a standard action, or does it just say make the strength check when you try to draw a weapon? No, it says a standard action to retrieve your weapon. Okay. So he would be able to pull it out and then the next round throw it. Okay, because I, I was thinking he could try to draw it as he moved. Okay. All right, this this giant is blindly um, flailing at Tarek. Oh, you tried, you tried so hard. <laughs> someday, big guy. Someday. Well, you could always move your move from the square you're in and just. He has to roll a 19 or a 20 to hit me. Still. That's true. Chance. You're right. I could just move. A crit right. from a stone giant? Yeah, you don't want that chance. That's that's very true. So, as much as I'd like to continue tonight, it is 12 o'clock. I do have to shut down. There is uh, a bunch more in this fight. So, uh, be ready. And, um, who is, also, so who is we're level next? 12 now, right? Um, the next person up would be Tarek after another stone giant goes. But I just wanted to, uh, to also. Mm -hmm we close up give you an idea of what you are up against when we come back in two weeks I'm excited a dragon we're gonna fight a dragon overhead you hear the screeching roar and you uh, see the flames streak through the sky um, bustling past the rain and uh Next weekend, next week, or the following week, you'll have um, a chance of being all struck by this so much that uh, you might even feel some fear to uh, to the point where you can't actually move. So we'll see what happens. And uh, we'll see let's you guys fear the right. paladin that is known to, f to fuck up her fear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is at this point that Froon very much wishes that he had actually taken the time to to learn resist energy. <laughs> I have it. I have Good. the communal version, but we all need to be together again. Yeah. 
if, if we're facing the dragon, believe me, I'm going to be porting whoever the stragglers are. So, uh, Mike, we're level 12 now, right? You will, uh, you will not be level 12 until after the, uh, the first portion of this. You guys were actually <laughs> higher level than you should have been last time. Uh, so, throwing a little bit extra at, at you, but uh, I was going to even it up. So you guys were going to catch back up this time. That's fine. Matt, we probably want our healer when we're tackling the dragon. Right, I don't know what you're about talking about. Nothing I, can hit us. Yeah, I've literally not taken damage <laughs> this entire don't, session. Don't. Oh, <laughs> God damn, guys. <laughs> Haven't you learned anything about haunting fate? <laughs> literally <laughs> never. Haunting the GM. And I, also, well, I also got rid of all my negative levels. False sense of security accomplished. <laughs> you, you know, like, even when you're the GM, I'm still confusing you. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> oh, but yeah, this was a good session, guys. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I definitely had fun. Cool. Well, uh, let's do it again next weekend. Yeah. I had a great I'll be time, a too. A bit longer on, uh, on Discord if you guys want to chat. Uh, I'll maybe, uh, um, I'll definitely see maybe. There. Maybe after I feed the baby, we can play some Overwatch. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. Alright, take it easy. Alright, for those who are still watching on the stream, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, very much appreciate the viewership. Uh, Salista, I believe you're still in here. Uh, thank you very much again for putting up with our usual rule lowering bullshit. But uh, it's a lot of fun. I appreciate it, though. Thank you for that. And uh, see you next week. Uh, this particular group plays every Saturday. Uh, we just alternate between Rune Lords and Iron Gods. And we also play at the same time on Mondays and Tuesdays as well, uh, with slightly different uh, groups. So, yeah, feel free to join us next time. Enjoy. <laughs>